And welcome back to another episode of Cardboard Ands. We are back again with your lovely host. That is Retrospects down below or on the side wherever it ends up. And this time, a newbie. We got Thrifty TCG filling in for we. We is going to be back on the channel. He is just sort of having some real life issues going on right now. And so rather than holding up the podcast any longer, he said just... Keep on bringing run some it, awesome baby, people on. Run it, baby, run it. So Thrifty, thank you so much for being here. So if any of you guys have not ever met Thrifty or seen her or been to her channel before, um, she's fantastic, just a staple. She's been on our, ch- on our channel before, um, but we just thought it would be great to have her on because all three of us are going to be in Dallas together coming up in uh, this coming, what is it, May? May 4th or 3rd, 4th, like- something? Three weeks away, bro. Yeah, it's it's Three very weeks. soon. It's the day yeah. after Cinco de Mayo. Okay, yeah. so so it's coming soon, and we're all gonna be there. And so, if anyone is going to be at Dallas, that is sort of gonna be the topic of uh, this episode. But definitely come find us there. Um, I don't know. Are you guys gonna have booths or what's going on? Anyway, welcome. What's up, everyone? Before we, you know, get too much into just writing the topic, how are you guys doing? How are you doing, Fifty? How are you doing, Nick? What's going on? What's new with you guys? It's been a couple of weeks since we talked, so we should probably get into some of that. It's been a pretty chill, chill week. Um, good week for sales, which was nice. I don't know. Something about like, I think people are getting their tax returns and shit back. So it's uh, the money's flowing, baby. We're well, doing it. Rent. Rent is done. Everyone paid their rent and they've gotten paid. That's what it was. It's the 16th <laughs> today, which means yeah. it's about two weeks out from rent. Everyone had to pay, you know, everyone had to pay their mortgages, the rents, the beginning of the month or whatever it is, their bills. and They're caught up, baby. We're they got their spending <laughs> money. Flush, so baby. You know. Yeah. So I think yep. you might be onto something. But I, I, would, I would say that's true. I've had a pretty good uh, week of sales as well. Yep. How about you, Nick? Good. I'm uh, I'm excited to, to talk to you folks. I've been doing those lives where I just talking to the void for... oh the rants <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those so have been I'm... good you've been doing great with that i love it i appreciate that but i miss kind of like talking to people i, I feel <laughs> a little bit secluded you know what i mean so yeah. Hermetic. it's nice Hermetic. to have a, a, some people to bounce things off of you know it feels very lively when you got a group i think you know two is nice when it comes to like having a conversation and that's what it feels like But three always feels like it's a party. Like, it it just feels more organic. Four and five and six, then it starts to be a little raucous, you know. But I think it really is, a three is kind of like the sweet spot for me and for, like, what I see with content. Because, like, you can still have that organic flow and you don't feel like one person is kind of not really able to say something. Whereas it does feel that way in those larger streams. It feels like someone just either maybe doesn't get left out, but just doesn't necessarily have as much to contribute because it's just, they're they're being polite, you know? Yep. It gets weird when there's a lot of people on sometimes, you know, just like six dudes staring at, (laughs) staring at you and you're like, "Hmm, I'm good. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, but that being said, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I do appreciate you filling in for Wee, and I'm sure he he does too. Um, But he'll be back, so anyone who is wondering if Flex is going to come back, he's going to be back on the the channel here, but he's just got a couple things to sort out. He'll be in Dallas too, though, so that that goes for everyone. Um, You know, go see all of us in person if you can. Um, But yeah, so you said you got good sales this week, Thrift? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I actually sold a sketch card this week. That was kind of cool. Like one of the weirder things I sold. Um, I had like a, I already packaged it up. So shit, I should have. Like what, what TCG was it from? Uh, It's the, one of the ones from the family guy boxes. And it was like a Stewie and, uh, fuck Stewie. And what's the dog? Uh, Uh, I'm trying. Yes. Okay. Stewie and Brian sketch card. And it was like done with like pencil and it was really cool and i sold out for like 80 bucks and that was like psa that started authenticating those now like or who is it that recently started grading sketches was it it's one of the grading companies that didn't before but now does i think it is psa yeah that's a big deal man that's a really big deal i'm so excited right now (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's 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 cool though because like before you had to go to Beckett and and you know say what you will about Beckett but and like how maybe they've improved but it's not the most user-friendly company to have to deal yeah. with as a customer sure. and like I would 10 times out of 10 rather deal with PSA 100%. like I mean Beckett's they got those slabs and oh CGC though they're they're announcing their new perfect their um their perfect slab label did you guys hear about that uh, okay. Real quick though, real quick, I will say on sketch cards, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys have like had them in hand before, but a lot of the time, because the artists draw directly on the cards a lot of the time, so there's like not like dents, but like you can see on the surface, pressure marks like, or something. Yeah, pressure marks from the pen or or whatever yeah. uh, you know they're using, mm -hmm. and so I kind of feel like PSA needs to take that into account and grade on a curve. Like if the corners are good. I feel like that's the only thing, you know what I mean? But you can't like give somebody a six because the artist, you know, like, I don't feel like that's fair. What do you guys think? I would like to see what they do with it before I start saying that they're going to do, because I a hundred percent agree with you. And I think the PSA, they got to know, you know, they got to know that, that level, um, because how are they going to give, like you said, a fucking perfectly great card, a six, because the artist you know was shading a little bit too hard and it went through on the back you know i think they'll just authenticate them like beckett does i don't does beckett, oh, beckett doesn't even grade them i don't think they just authenticate them oh that might be true because you're right basic trainers got that my little pony sketch so, and it's just authenticated yeah. it's not graded and i think you're right that they haven't graded them they authenticate yeah thrifty uh, that's why we like you that's why you're here you're smart you know you, you, you use your noggin that's, that's what we um i mean that's just like rational just so that they don't have to deal with the whole like there's a lot of them are older too so like i, I don't know this one at least i probably wouldn't even have graded it even if i could because like the corners were super dinged it's like the um what's it called like the the rectangular corners they're just like sharp corners so they're super dinged and these boxes aren't even that that old, like for the Family Guy stuff. So it's just, they're all one of one. So who cares what the grade is? As long as, long as it's authenticated, then it kind of serves that purpose of being in the slab. So yeah, you're right. Yeah, I checked with um, PSA before I sold, like before I put it up raw on eBay, because I basically like they wouldn't authenticate it unless they had the... Uh, or the artist signature in the registry already that's at that time like when I look I looked it up like six months ago I don't know and I've had it on my eBay forever like it sat forever at like a hundred bucks and I was like fuck it <laughs> somebody offered me 80 and I was like whatever dude um and I don't think I paid that much for it so I paid like 30 or 40 bucks for it and it's a nice little nice little lick but um yeah I they were just like if we don't have that uh, that artist from that show in our registry we won't authenticate it so I was like all right well fuck it I don't even I don't feel like dealing with this like I'm too <laughs> I don't know I probably should have like pushed them a little bit but I just didn't think of it but I mean for an extra 30 bucks or 50 bucks or what what would you have gotten 200 bucks out of it I don't uh, think it matters that much yeah. like the slab doesn't really do a lot but they're all one they're all pretty unique so it depends on the individual sketch i would imagine and like how how hard the boxes are to get yeah. how expensive those general boxes are to open and yeah. how many sketches you get per case per box etc it's a lot of nuance with that um but that being said like there's been a lot of moves by grading companies recently what with like psa grading those metal cards and now like we just kind of i mentioned that you guys hadn't heard about and i realized this because like this happened in denver no, not Denver. What am I saying? Orlando. They were we were all talking, hanging out on Saturday, and Matt Matt Quinn, the the president, I guess now he was the the TCG guy behind um uh CGC, but now he's like he got promoted to the president of the company. He was hanging out with us, and he let slip the new perfect label that they're going to be unveiling, oh, yeah. and they're gonna have like their version of black label at CGC now. It's going to have a different label than their perfect 10. And so it's going to stand out. It's not going to be a black label. He specifically said that it's not going to be black label because that's Beckett's thing. But it's going to be that type of like, you can see it from across the room and real and recognize that it's different from the perspective. I, th I think the gold like goes good with the blue so I would hope that they would kind of like lean into that because that that color combination seems to do pretty well 
Um, I hope it's an yeah. all gold label. That would be really sick. That like a yeah. prismatic gold or just a, a flat like a really classy gold label. That would be really cool. And you should. I don't. I don't know. I feel like it would be a good thing for them to do for maybe like the first three months or something. Let's say of the rollout, you should be able to send in your perfect tens for like five or six bucks and get them converted. They you know always do that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like that would be a good like that. A that would drive like a little bit of revenue for them. But I just feel like there are people like with Beckett that really care about the CGC perfect tens, whether you guys think it's, you know, silly or not, like there's people out there that that's what they're about. Yep. So I feel like if you're moving on to this new thing and this is going to be your standard moving forward, like you should honor that for the people that are, you know what I mean? Like that really kind of the early adopters in. basically yeah. don't get screwed. Yeah. But yeah. Still have to technically that's for sure going to happen. Yeah. Cause that's what Beckett would do if they ever did that new changeover. I think they already kind of said that that would be, a, then they're not anymore, but that's what they would do. Um, I think CGC's sister company, like CSG or whatever it is, they're like sports card company. Yep, they yep. recently yeah. did that where they changed over like their grading, their 9.5 became 10s or whatever weird thing. And you could change for a smaller fee, send your old cards in and switch, swap over the labels. So I'm positive that's going to be a thing because that would definitely be cool. Like I could imagine, like, I've sold some perfect 10 CGC, you know, cards, and I can yeah. totally imagine they would look, they would do better if they had that, like, a different label. label. Yeah. And they know that at CGC, like, Matt was specifically, we were all talking about, there's a group of, like, 10 or 15 of us all talking, and it was a really, really cool conversation, because it showed that they really do know what people in the market want, and they weren't trying to just, like, copy Beckett and do, like, the black label thing. But you should be able to kind of tell looking at the slab, not have to like squint and read perfect 10. You should be able to tell that it's a perfect, you know, a 10, 10, 10, 10 that sets it apart from the pristine, which that would set them then apart from PSA because he knew that he would never, they would never be PSA. And right. so in order to compete in that space as a grading company, you you also you can't necessarily be Beckett because they have like the pedigree and they have their name and they're just Beckett is who they are. But you can certainly be your own and and offer the same, if not better experience with better customer service, better, you know, whatever it is. And potentially CGC's take that. customer service is so much better. And like their oh. tracker is so much better than Beckett. Like Beckett's yeah. taking tiny steps. Like the website is a little bit in the submission process is kind of cleaner now, but like, dude, CGC from the get has had it together. So yeah. really, really quick. I, I just kind of thought about this because you were saying like, yeah, they'll never be PSA. And that's definitely true, but I feel like it's in like, it, it points to the fact that the market is so fucking hot right now that there are, I guess you could kind of say four major companies like PSA, CGC, Beckett, and maybe like SGC, which they don't do as much TCG. Like they do sports and, you know, non-sport and stuff like that too. But for the market to be able to kind of have value in like four different grading companies is, you know what I'm saying? Cause remember like when everybody was talking about like when CGC was kind of, like infant like is in its infant stage a little people are like oh well like are people really going to like cgc and is it going to hold up over time and will the slabs have value and it's like they've kind of proven at this point that they're like one of the big boys you know what i mean and so it's just interesting to see that the market has been so strong that they're able to incorporate and psa is even still doing more like what over a million cards a month still so like yeah I, yeah what do you guys think about that it's deep, man. It's real deep. The market is very deep and it's wide and it's girthy. Uh, and it can be hey, positive. Go. Shit. <laughs> Whoa. That last adjective was a, was a little. <laughs> no, but I mean, the thing is, like, there are people who collect specific grading companies, there are people who collect specific species across all grading companies. Yeah. That was true. Uh, there's an auction. <laughs> yeah, he sets alarms. That's a strap, boys. Set an alarm for your auction. No, no, don't use that. Don't do that. Use Gixon. This is just an important one. No, but forget it. It's not that, that important. We're not, yeah. Um, but in in the case of like grading companies, though, it it, it it's interesting to see for sure. Sorry, that alarm totally derailed me. I mean, I think here's the thing. They technically they do differentiate the labels because it has the fucking subgrades. Like 
most of the perfect tens or the pristine tens don't have subgrades anyways. So like that's one way that they differentiate the the like perfects in my opinion. Like I don't think they I don't know. I think it would be weird for them to change it now. I don't know, but maybe I'm fucking crazy. I don't I don't know. think they're changing as much as it's like they're just improving and adding that that thing that maybe some people would be asking for i guess the question is is it gonna hurt like would it hurt at all i mean Uh, i guess i mean i don't think it hurts them but i just think it's like people are used to like people don't really like change fair is what i mean so like those people can stick with psa (laughs) yeah like i I don't know it's just kind of weird i guess like People liked it when they added the free subgrades. If you hit the perfect, like that was people liked that because they got something like they got something extra. So like, I don't know. I think that's part of it. Uh, That should be like, that's kind of what they want. If that's what you want to differentiate the label, like you're not most pristine tens don't have the subs. So like for me, that's all I really need. But I understand people want like something that makes it look like makes it look different i don't know dude that's the i really like the clarity on the cgc slabs but the only thing that kind of holds me back is like i don't know why i just prefer like bgs and psa labels to the cgc label i agree with you that they don't like need to do it but i think i think the market is gonna like it because it's like new flashy shiny the first person that hits the market with one of these like new cgc tens Uh... and like a big alt art like they're going to print, you know what I mean? Like, oh, however man. goofy it is. Um, I just they're hope it to print good. so hard off that shit, dude. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, no, like, they're going to do, they're going to do really good. So, I don't know. I, I, I just hope it looks good. But, yeah, yeah I, I, I don't know. Like, the difference between, like, the, the pristine 10, like you said, and the perfect 10. But, to me, it's, it's almost weird. Like, you would think that the pristine 10 should have the subgrades because with the perfect 10, it's like, well, you know all four subgrades. You know they're going to be a 10. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. That, yeah, but I, I don't I'm know. Like, it's, it's there. Technically, it's there. Like. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I don't know. Yeah. However silly it may be, I do think that the market is like, yeah, you, you hit one of those tens of like a good alt art or, you know, one of the like the waifus or something, you get like a, a perfect, perfect, whatever they're going to call it <clears throat> or whatever it's going to look like. Like you hit one of that of the new waifus in a t- like good night. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and yeah. it might, maybe they're trying to like bully Beckett out of the market. Like, a, <laughs> I don't know what I mean. Dude. Like maybe that, I, I don't know about that, but maybe and they're you- trying to. Mm, does that work though i don't know time cgc has like three to five day turnaround time in some cases like (laughs) i I mean in the most extreme cases that's not always the case like i've heard people also taking like a month or longer but for the most part three day turnaround time it costs 13 dollars and 50 cents to send a card to cgc you do not have to send with subgrades in order to get those perfects or whatever and you can just literally send um a mountain of Japanese modern cards of my mo- and and one of them is going to turn into be perfect like you could send commons for all you open a whole <laughs> box send everything one perfect <laughs> pin and it's going to pay for the box and then you're probably going to still be in cheaper because with Beckett the thing about Beckett and shout out to Rock Pokemon Rock Pokemon was on the podcast last about- on our good friend of ours friend of the pod uh, he always says like never send to Beckett in bulk and always use, and if you can, get the subs, you know, don't send without the subs. You're like, it's stupid to send it to Beckett and not get subgrades. That's what you say. So then you're in the card for like $30 plus to grade, and you got to wait for Beckett, which is going to take forever to grade your card. So like, do I think that they're trying to bully CGC out? No, yes. no, I don't think so at all. In so much as like, literally, C- Beckett isn't trying to do anything at all. To, and, and CGC is offering just like literally not, it's like, hey, hey, Beckett, we love you. You're really cool. Can we go like over here and like just do our own thing and like improve on what you're doing? And like, I mean, and people, it's not bullying at all. It's just literally them providing a better service and the market uh, seeing, because like I'm not sending stacks and stacks to CGC. I'm not sending stacks and stacks to Beckett. I'm mm-hmm. sending stacks and stacks to PSA right now. I'll send a couple things to CGC, like errors and you know. It hurt with CGC, dog. Like it's 
it's tough. Like I know there's probably plays to be made there, but it's like, <laughs> you know, once you get like the one, like not great sub from CGC or you sell through your tens and then you're sitting on like 9.5s and nines and you're, breaking it and you're like, man, like, cause you could just send a PSA take slightly little bit of a less premium on the 10, but you're like, you're going to get way more tens like cause CGC and, but thrifty saying like, maybe they're not gatekeeping as much as they used to be. So it, it might be like more of a play now. But yeah, um, I feel it. I've been hurt before. I have also. Bro, been. I feel yeah. you. I understand <laughs> you. I know. I know the trauma of the nines. I know it. Like, the they don't five. sell. Nobody wants it. Like, it's so stupid. And I'm like, here's the thing, though. Like, I can have this shit door to door in seven, in seven days, less than Five business days. Thirteen dollars and fifty. Five business days. Thirteen fifty. Yeah, what are I we mean, doing? You're not. You're not wrong. I mean, that is that is kind of nuts. And Just don't send English. Don't send English. Oh, like, you will get your. Why? Don't send English. <laughs> They'll just get wedgy. They'll just wedgie you so hard, bro. That's your free. That's the the no paywall. <laughs> that's gonna save anyone watching. Don't send English. That's what you get for free from us. You know, you got to pay the sixty nine ninety nine a month to get the good stuff, but that's for free. Yeah, Don't is. send English to CGC. No, <laughs> we're not doing it. Honestly, I'm sending fucking Weiss. I'm sending, yeah, I'm sending all my Disney shit, like cheap shit to CGC. And then I'm going to have it back for fucking Collecticon. Like, this is great. This is perfect for me. Like, I don't give a shit what they come back as. I'm but, gonna sell uh, all these for thirty dollars, men in person, and I don't give two fucks, dude. This is gonna be the best shit ever. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other thing you got going for you, too, <laughs> the Disney stuff, I feel like maybe a little bit is, yeah, card collectors are gonna want Disney stuff, but like Disney people that normally might not give a fuck about cards are gonna just want the Disney card. So even if it's like a nine, they're just like, whatever. It's a Mickey. I like that card. I'm gonna yeah. buy it. You know what exactly. I mean? Like they're not gonna be as picky or yeah picky about the grades is like the car collectors are because they're just like this is the only way i can get this art so if it's a difference of you know fifty dollars eighty dollars whatever like they're not going to care they just want it like as a disney collector's piece right you know? yeah and also i've seen um uh what is that guy the great curators videos like of the dallas card show he always brings pixar and he always fucking sells out dude that's one thing i know so like if that does well, like I'm bringing, I'm going to be loaded up with singles. I'm going to be loaded up with fucking Pixar singles and I have a bunch of slabs of it. So like, I wasn't even, I was like debating even bringing it honestly, cause it did so bad in Dallas. I mean, in Orlando. And I was just like, and I was like, fuck man. No, Disney's hot right now. I think Disney it, is I mean, hot, dude. And yeah, if I have these hot, back, uh... I'm hot everything disney's very hot just like you said it's like it's one of those trending things it's like i think that if anything the whole lorcana thing will only boost the disney 100 and is that a japanese exclusive white set or is it going to come out in english as well they're not coming out in english from what i've heard uh that's but they are getting the reprint uh the reprint for pixar just came out or is about to come out at the end of the month they are nobody asked but they're reprinting pixar um and then this i think will also have like another wave or a i don't really know whether it's a wave system or whether it's a reprint but i've heard there is a second a second coming of disney 100 so okay, don't fret cool. I'm they're trying to get that cash money cash. bro they're trying to put cacao out of business yeah, like i see what y'all like, are doing. how much is cacao the fuck <laughs> cacao what <laughs> yeah Kaka, what the fuck? that's what they want people to say it's crazy so is that your play for Dallas? Or then is you're gonna bring a bunch of Disney stuff then thrift? Or, or do you have a table well. there, by the way? No, but I'm gonna just hustle, dude. Anybody I see with those fucking Disney 100 boxes, I'm just gonna be like, you want some singles? Yeah. And I'm yeah. just gonna try to offload them at like six, six bucks a piece, and like they could sell them for 10 a piece. And we're Gucci, like whatever, dude. I mean, it's not that hard, you know. I gotta stop like, sleeping on Disney, dude. Like I didn't. I remember Swami or Rock or somebody put up the pre-order for uh, Disney 100, and I was like, "Oh yeah, it'll probably do good." <laughs> I just, like dude. stupid man. They they were on like what Hammer Girl anime or whatever it was. No, she didn't have them actually. This is I called them actually to try to get it, and they don't do anything with like 
without jet without the english license basically at hammer uh, okay so that's like something to note um so japanese releases don't go through her but okay. um it's still i think it was like 80 80 a box was the lowest i saw it i know some people could get in at like 60 but normally they're like 50 bucks a box if you pre-order the case so some people have a really good like in point on these and especially if you like the game stores that got it early and ripped it and sold the singles fucking printed like somebody canceled my order on a fucking aladdin card like the aladdin and jasmine card and i'm like thank god i was gonna pay like 30 dollars for that stupid shit now it's like five bucks i'm like you dumb fuck like you like canceling my order ass now <laughs> so i'm um, what are what are boxes selling for right now i think uh well weedle put his up for 120 like the day he got them after like i paid him i don't know what i paid him like almost What's... 100 or close to 100 when i last saw it was like 100 to 110 or something was no, that was they, like the week they're moving, before they're, been, they're moving up they're uh they're like 130 now. Yeah. yeah like i, I know so that case, it's a big thing cases... The cases are selling for 2K and that's 18 box. Damn. Okay. Well, one sold today. 159, 150, 149, 95, 135. Shit, dude. Like, pumping. Ooh, yeah. I know it's are... hot. It's organically hot because like I, I watch a lot of Pokemon stuff. And I think I was watching Rock and he was opening um Disney 100. Yeah, 100. he's gotten three boxes in. Yeah, he did it on his YouTube and my my fiance never says anything about what I'm watching. She doesn't care, but then she saw that. She's like, "Hey, Ooh. what's that?" She's like, "What's that? Is that Disney cards you didn't tell me?" And I was like, "That's <laughs> I was like, "It's Japanese, don't worry." And she literally lost interest in like a split second. She was like, "Oh, I okay, I don't care." But you don't need to read them. They're fucking just carrot. They're just like picture cards, dude. It's like Lilo and Stitch. What the fuck are we doing? That's what? fire. I like, like that card really a lot. Fuck, cool. This isn't gonna sell for thirty dollars in a nine point five, dude. Fuck off. <laughs> like, no, it's not because it's gonna get a perfect ten, and you're gonna sell yes. it for two fifty. Three hundred. Have a gold label. Here. A first. This, label. That's a swami pack dude. right there. This is a swami pack, a hundred percent. Worst case scenario, dude. I always sell, sell it to oh, that way. This brings up though something i kind of wanted to talk a little bit about that i've been seeing uh i feel i was talking about this i i feel like a little bit that there's a lot of money sloshing around and it's going into a lot of different directions in the tcg space and it's very interesting because i've never felt this way maybe in the 90s it was this way and i was too young to realize it because i was so engrossed and i was in it in the 90s when i was a kid and i was into like the things i was into i wasn't as aware like right now, it feels like there are so many more IPs and other opportunities for like TCGs that are really taking off and doing well, and they're really growing. It didn't feel this way in 2020. It felt like there were like the big two, like it was Pokemon and Magic was kind of hitting a little bit. And then MetaZoo was coming up on its heels and the Kickstarter things were all kind of yeah. popping off. But there wasn't a big thing besides you just gonna forget about Yu-Gi-Oh. You're just going to forget about my girl. <laughs> awesome. Nobody uh, cared about yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh until just recently and it started popping off. I'm sorry. I know you guys are trying to make Fetch a thing, but it, it's not going to be a thing. All right. So. It's just, I'm sorry, Yu-Gi-Oh! on this channel, I cannot say good things about it. I've experienced, I've lived what Yu-Gi-Oh! can offer in the card shops. And I can't ever tell my, my consumers, the people who are consuming my content, that I would ever recommend getting into Yu-Gi-Oh! But that is just, <laughs> hey, that's all. So I know it's, a, it's not a popular take among a lot of people. Right in the rent. People who like Yu-Gi-Oh! And that's okay. But, like, I've just been in a world where when Yu-Gi-Oh! players started coming around to the card shop, whenever, you know, the Magic tournament started, the Pokemon tournament was over, the Yu-Gi-Oh! players started showing up, I would have to take my backpack, bring it off from behind me, and either put it under my chair in front, or I'd have to walk around at the tournament with my backpack on the front. Wow. And it, I didn't ever feel that way with any Shifty Pokemon. Shifty fellows, yeah. Shifty fellows. Huh? It's just like, it felt like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it was, but that's Yukio to me. And it's never been able to shake that. And it's this always felt like off brand Pokemon at the same time, too. So to be fair, like the show is like Pokemon is a lot more like 
wholesome and i mean like Yu-Gi-Oh definitely has it's like oh teamwork and friendship type stuff for sure but like Yu-Gi-Oh is way darker than pokemon pokemon is like silly and goofy and Yu-Gi-Oh gets a little bit dark sometimes so that's probably you know why it attracts a certain type of individual <laughs> but yeah I don't, know. I don't know man i think a lot of the Yu-Gi-Oh people ended up in sneakers you know what I mean? That feels like the general, and then like the Pokemon people. Ended up in, like, uh, nah, bro. Sneakerheads are way like Yu Gi Oh is like neck beard edgy, but sneaker are way more seen for the sneaker dudes. I don't know. Okay, okay. Maybe I don't know the sneaker community very well, though. I, just, just I, think, this... I think you have trauma, and like that's okay too. It's okay. yeah. I have bad experiences with the the community of Yu Gi Oh that I haven't had reconciled yet. You guys keep talking about Yu Gi Oh and like. You're like, you won't oh, get it from me. I got nothing. Oh, I know. So, okay, some people talk about Yu-Gi-Oh, but it's like, oh yeah. I'm just like, I don't know, man. I, I, I guess people play it though. That's Metro's a- feeling attacked, but that's okay. Oh, real, <laughs> real quick, on. real quick to to bring it back to your to your point about like the multiple TCGs. This might be kind of a hot take, but I, I'm bullish on like just the car like you know a lot of it is probably like you know wishful thinking and just being hopeful like oh man i hope this goes on for a long time but like i'm pretty bullish on like the next three to five years of just cards in general being like pretty popular and pretty hot i hope it lasts five ten twenty you know for the rest of our adult life like that would be sick but who knows right but i'm kind of excited for some of these different tcgs to like die maybe so that they become dead tcgs and then become fun to go back and like get the chase cars you know what i mean like there's some stuff now like uh that union arena stuff that's coming out or whatever it's like it might do well but it's i feel like between weiss and uh like there's already a my hero card game they're doing one piece now like there's a lot of anime card games so i'm like another anime card game seems kind of nuts i think it's cool though and they're doing like Full Metal Alchemist and, and Hunter X Hunter, like animes that I really like. So like three years from now, or you know, I mean, I don't know how long it's gonna last or whatever, but I I, I don't know if it's it's gonna gain too much traction. But let's say it dies in like a year or two. In three to five years, I would love to go back and like get into that. You know, and, I, and I'm sure that there's because think about all the I I mean, I don't know, because I wasn't into cards as hard like I was a kid so I I didn't really like you know know all the nuances of the market and all the other card games that were out so like when I look at all the card games that have died over the past 20 years it's like there's some really cool stuff in there but I feel like none of the times when any of those card games were out were anywhere near as like strong a markets as we have now you get what I'm saying so dude this is where we need like gary king pokemon to be here so that he can give yeah. us the, the, that perspective from that time at and this time we can literally talk like how many older folks do you know boomer types who are around in the 90s as adults as 30 plus year olds I- interacting with the market like we're interacting with it now who are still interacting with pokemon i can think like- of one like One. Ken Golden, Ken Golden and Gary and Uber. Golden isn't interacting with Pokemon. He knows what it is, but it's because like his kids He's selling like, it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, he doesn't. <laughs> inter- Gary loves Pokemon. Probstein, Probstein yeah. seems to be that dude's Probstein's like a collector. A, yeah, he that probably knows right there. Yeah. But I mean, they're not many, and so that's a very unique perspective. So shout out to people who stay in the hobby like Gary. And I mean, say what shout you shout out to the olds. What's and good? The olds, but, yeah, but you can go. You can go. We love to shout out King Golden. So I, I would love if he listened to this podcast. But it's just, uh, you know, it's one of those things that, like, it would be nice to hear that perspective because we are sitting here speculating on it when the three of us have no idea besides I wasn't there, documentaries huh? by sec- you know what people have said secondhand it would be they're really doing cool. a netflix show actually on like golden uh they said i think they, they like did a preview no there's like a preview for it on netflix like on oh, or something yeah shoot, that sounds cool um, I'm, I'm down it's like coming out soon i think but um, anyway nick that that was what i'm tra- trying to say though what you said about the dying you're excited about dying card games and stuff is not what I think that these new companies are wanting to hear about their new brands that they just started. They're not wanting their customers who are buying in to be thinking that, oh yeah, I can't wait for this shit to die so that in three <laughs> years from now I can buy it cheap and, and then really start cooking once all that, you know, they're not making any money and they're out of business working at Wendy's again. But like, do you think that there's potentially a lot of money that's being taken from 
the traditional big three um like tcgs and being shifted towards these other markets because let's be real we talk about like really big brain shit like market caps and stuff but in reality what what is real what's really the market cap of pokemon nobody really knows because like what are people like you can look at the market pack cap of something like a moonbrion and say well if this card is this much and there's this many graded and this many they're going to be a great and then extrapolate some information out of it and say this is what but, even, but that doesn't but matter even that, doesn't though, like, shit about that you know yeah well not only that, but then like you can't even tell it too because if you go, okay, well, last sold was this, and then just multiply it by the pop report. It's like, well, how many of those people pulled that out of a pack that they bought for four dollars, graded it for yeah, you know, it's 15, and are keeping it. Nuanced. Yeah, and are yeah. keeping it for themselves. You know what I mean? Like you, you have no idea, like if all I mean, I'm sure how a vast much majority money of the people that are getting and this hobby actually take and, still, yeah. and still move forward at the rate. And that goes to the point of what you said, these potentially too many different IPs coming together and like, they're all great, but like some have to die, right? So like, I guess to bring it up, bring it back to what's the topic we talk about, spicy topic, but like, which ones do you think are going to die? Who's the first to die? I have. I think I have the a, titties are the safest, I think. Okay, the so yeah. titties are the safest. Good, what are the safer ones? <laughs> that's a good question. That's a good point. Like, what are the safer ones? I don't know, dude. <laughs> Pokemon? That's all I know. Pokemon? Pokemon and titties. That's all I know. That's all I know that will survive. But in what regard? The There's a lot of titties. Like in Pokemon, you talking about titties in Pokemon? No, no the it's fucking like, white. She's talking about wise, wise, yeah. wise. Is there? But, is good. but what's good about titties in Pokemon, dude? Like that—that's what people are all about right now. The waifus they don't even care about I Pokemon. Still, the I new still Japanese think it's... set doesn't even have any good Pokemon in it. It's all <laughs> waifus. Well, like, I don't know. Some of some of the art rares are kind of sick, but it. Well, okay. I would say, like, Pokemon, yeah, yeah. Pokemon is is definitely like less like Weiss is a whole different animal, dude. It is very like overtly sexual. Bro, it's Pokemon, ridiculous. I'm like, yeah, Pokemon is still. Like, like, sad. I, I don't <laughs> like the girl with the books. I think that's like a beautiful card as art, but it's, it's not like cool. sexual. You know what I mean? Like it's it's just. I mean, it is a waifu, I guess, but like the card isn't. It's just a really good looking card. Like the art is sick. The colors are really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, There's so I just some way like worse different... offenders for sure in Pokemon. Yeah, that's like that's not the exact one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like the Skylas and like you know all the the lilies. <laughs> yeah, I, don't know I mean those... they're not overtly <laughs> set. Pokemon doesn't sexualize its its trainers, which is awesome. I personally think that's yeah. great because I don't think cool girl. Um, what else? Okay, maybe a couple uh, of them. Rocks, are right. Rose. Yeah, Rock okay, Man. let me backtrack a little bit. If if that's the direction they want to go, sure. I just personally don't collect trainers like that. So, like, I... I am selling them, but... I, I'm a seller them. more than I'm a buyer on those types of things. I but sold like, a Dana today, dude. That if I was going to collect tired. trainers, though, I would collect Weiss. I wouldn't collect Pokemon. Because, like, what are we doing? Like, if you're into <laughs> that, then aren't you going to lean heavily into it with Weiss rather than go, like, the cartoon i don't know i guess i'm not in tune with that buyer market because i'm not that buyer so like i'm speculating on something that i have no business speculating on apparently i'm just trying to understand it i i guess because like i just know that most of the market is men and because of that the girls will never go away that's all i know yeah. yeah, and it makes what me I, very I, I sad. Like the in the on the Japanese versus English side, like why is it that like on the Japanese side, what is the Merriam at in a PSA ten? The Japanese Merriam is it still like over a thousand dollars or whatever? I don't even know, dude. The English one is like fifty bucks, sixty bucks. I think it's trending at seventy, maybe, but it'll be fifty bucks Rock. by the end of whatever yeah. the month, yeah. maybe, maybe not, maybe it'll go back up. But it's but it's under that was like 100. eighty bucks for the raw. For the Rob Miriam. Yeah. So it's under a hundred dollars for the English and it's almost a thousand it's more than a thousand for the, the Japanese well, it's, probably. It's selling the, the Japanese PSA ten is selling at a thousand basically right now. Ten times rock cards eight hundred. Ten times premium. Yeah. Why is it that that is the, the case? English is only a hundred in a ten? No, it's it's eighty raw. It's like so it's 70 to 80 raw, yeah. Yeah, so what is it? What is it in a 10? I don't know if there's a lot of 10s out there yet. If they are, they're inflated, so. 
it'll be first to market, so it wouldn't be a good yeah. number. It wouldn't be an accurate number. I'm gonna Looks guess like that a, card will so settle at about 100, 120 to hundred. Oh, fucking hell, six hundred. Six hundred is what the English. So it looks like six eighty nine ninety nine on April 9th, six hundred on the thirteenth. A BGS nine point five sold three days ago for six fifty. That just shows I don't know what I'm talking about because I just thought it would settle at like one one twenty to one fifty. But it's yeah, going to I mean in right two or right three now. months it might settle at that. But right, it'll now. take some time to get there if it's already if it's a six hundred out the gate. Like that's, that's kind of fucking crazy. I mean that's that's a play right now. I guess. I, yeah, that's there you really, go. There's some there's some non paywall stuff for the listeners. I don't like experience. like I really don't like the play the race to the bottom play. I feel. Bro, like I did it with the Giratina from uh, Crown Zenith, and it was the most stressful shit ever. I was yeah, like, like uh, get this the fuck like, out of my house. Like, like <laughs> encouraging the race to the bottom, like whatever. You say like, there's a play. I know you're just saying that joke, but like. I feel I like all this is. I would do it if I. Well, five hundred dollar margin. I mean, dude, even if like <laughs> half of that disappears, like, come on, you know, like, good. that's not the specific like... one. I'm talking about in general, the first yeah, 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 play. Yeah. Like, it's not necessarily It's stressful and it's a pain in the ass. And I think that generally, there people can and do do it, and they have a lot of success with it. But like, as someone who does this day to day. I hate doing that shit. Like it is mm-hmm. not what I like to do, and that's maybe just my problem. And I'm maybe oh, I'm just... I hate making money. Boo hoo! I hate it's, making money. It's just oh. such a weird so thing. So sad for it's you, not Fran. A so sure so thing cold. on everything either to be first to market. Stressful. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think six hundred dollars is dust. That is people paying six hundred dollars for an English PSA ten that's gonna settle at probably a hundred to one hundred and fifty. As always, is just just ridiculous. And I guess I'm just um, I'm continuing. You're just a fucking hater. That's all I know. You're a, a hater, bearish I'm hater, and I'm all set with right. you. You are getting kicked out of the Airbnb. Nick, yeah. boot him. Yeah. This that is, is a good point because if I'm not doing it, I'm leaving that much money on the table. But it does feel wrong seeing it. And the few times that I've done it and the times that I have done it, it felt so stressful. And the reward, yeah, sure, you, I, I did come out on top. The reward um, is massive margins. It yeah. didn't feel like it was worth it to me to have to stress and rush that much for it, I guess. You don't have to do anything. You pull the card or you buy the card and then you ship the card and then you list the card when you get the scans. It is very, very simple. It is not a stressful thing. I it sucks if the card PSA doesn't sell for what you want rates. it for. I hate paying PSA more than bulk rates, Thrifty. It <laughs> literally pains me to give them any money whatsoever. This is but, a leak in your listen, business. I am just going to say that right now. That's true. That's true. I'm sorry. I think I'm leaving on the table Love because you. I don't like giving PSA but more money. That's it's fair. It's a fucking leak. Yeah. If it's all that you're like relying on, like if it's your primary play or, you know, group of plays or whatever, then yeah, like no. maybe you need to worry about it, but you do so much like niche stuff that nobody else is doing anyway. So I kind of feel like it's just, it's like the risk versus reward thing. Like, you know, have a smaller percentage of your portfolio be the riskier stuff. It's the same thing. I feel like with plays, like if you're only relying on, like if you go super, super hard in it and that's like 50, 60% of your business, then the one time that you aren't first to market or somebody is just, willing to undercut you and make less for whatever reason, like you're going to get burnt. You know what I mean? But if you have other stuff that you're not really like racing to the bottom on, um, that'll kind of like even it out. I feel like so. It it might just be the the type of thing that I would be racing to the bottom on right now. Aren't things that I'm comfortable with. It's like the two things in the market that I personally would never buy or collect are the two things in the market that are are doing the best. Like I personally, if you were to ask like Josh, me, the boomer. Okay. What two things would you never put your money into? Okay, modern, ultra modern <laughs> Japanese is the first thing I would probably say. Yeah, I just don't like it. I just don't collect it. That's all. If I'm going to buy something and it's going to rip something modern, it's probably going to be English, even if it's shit quality. It's, a, it's just because it's what I like. And it's yeah. what I, my nostalgia and what my enjoyment of the Pokemon hobby is from. And so 
modern Japanese is ripping though. So I'm clearly dusted and wrong and I can't rely on that. And then the second I mean if you don't like it though, like you shouldn't sorry that's to what I mean. like, that's if you what don't I'm like it, say. I'm you should being... do stuff that you like, but like you know what I mean? Like you should because But then generally... Japanese trainers is the other thing, and full art trainers is the other thing that's ripping right now. And it's the other thing I would have never I I ever know. put in it. So like that's why even though I understand that the play is there and I understand that that's leaving money on the table probably why I'm purposefully leaving it on the table because I'm uncomfortable with those plays it just feels wrong but you're right there are other plays like the Arcanine the Gyarados the Slow King you know all the all the the Gen 1 Kanto boomer ass Pokemon that my boomer ass likes and so that's the type of stuff I should be more focusing on obviously and and so yeah it like Thrifty said just leaving it on the table but there's only so much one can do to be fair yeah. And, um, you know, in the Pokemon space, there's a lot. And being first to market, you do have to be, it, it's easy. Like you said, it's easy, quote unquote, because you don't have to do anything. I but mean, it's an added, it's a, it's a rush. Like you kind of have to be somewhat timely on it. And honestly, uh, I think we're all leaving money on the table. Like that's yeah, something yeah. that everyone like has to just like be okay with. You just have to like, you're like, okay, what do I want to leave on the table? And what don't I want to leave on the table? So, and you like- You have to find a lane. You honestly, yeah. you've got to have a That's lane. That's fine. Yeah, because- I'm just fun. saying, I'm just like, you get shit early, like, or like probably- I get English. A little bit early. English. Like, One week early, not, let's be, no. let's be like the Monday That's- before- and like you that's not that early fuck up on singles one week early john Dude, what am i gonna do with a week early when people on whatnot are getting it a month and a half early and they're literally getting it from before my distributor ever is even ordered the card <laughs> and gets it there are people breaking it on live yeah. apps right I'm like sure. as so like how is me getting something on the monday before release when there was a pre-release two weeks before you know, that's so true, I, but not a lot of singles are out there at that time, so you can just like. Roll I, I suppose, like, yeah. Like I, I've always been. People are cheap, and they'll send at the low levels. Like they won't wanna, they or they don't think it's that much faster or whatever. Fuck, my first forty was for you, ten Rupert. days in and out of PSA, ten business days. That's that quick. was really good, but yeah. I don't know. I don't think that's like the norm. I think it's no. Like, I have it's five like orders out right now at PSA, like five different orders, and they're all at different rates. And I sent them all roughly around the same time. It was the, yeah. at the fifteen dollar at the end of the last month before mm-hmm. you know I roll. I put I staggered a bunch of. Okay, so anyone who's watching right now, here's some more free advice for you. Okay. Here's something that if you are ever in a situation where you are wondering if you should send to PSA because you're worried that the special that they're having is going to end and you are worried you're going to FOMO, but you also think there's a possibility that they're going to lower the price next month and you don't want to send everything, but you still don't want to wait and you're thinking... Here's what you do, okay? I'm going to save you a ton of money and give you a huge play. You set I just your... did this, by so the way. So what you do, PSA, what people don't know is when you put in your orders for PSA, when you make your order, your submission, you have 30 days to then submit that order to PSA. Yep. So if you're ever thinking at the end of the month, you're like, man, I have these 20, 30 cards that I want to submit. But I think there's a possibility they're going to lower the price to $12 next month or $10 next month or whatever. And so you're like, but I don't want to risk it, them not lowering it and then bringing the price back up to $19 like they just did. So what do you do? Instead of sitting on your hands, like I heard some of my friends saying that they did because they don't want to send and get that rate and then get burned when they lower the price and have to eat that rate in the extra couple of days, you just put the order in. You make your order at the end of the month with your cards you might want to potentially send. PSA does not charge you until your cards get graded. You then have 30 days to then submit that order. You just print it out, print out all the forms, get your cards ready. And if they decide to lower their prices, you never have to send that order in again. You could just delete that order, put it into the void, and it will disappear and submit that exact same order to PSA with a new lower rate on the first, the second, or the third of the month whenever they give those new rates. Now, if what happens, what what does happen isn't that they lower their rates and they raise their rates like they did this month, 
and they don't have the TCG special, instead of just sitting there saying, ah, shit, I didn't send my <laughs> cards at $15. Now I'm going to send them all at $19 because I don't want to wait. And that four extra dollars, if I'm not make, if I'm not making four extra dollars on my cards I'm sending, I'm not sending good enough cards. And I'm just going to send it at the 19th. No, don't do that shit. Just do what I just said instead. Make your orders the day before the month is over, yeah. just in case. And then you can put those $15 in. So I have like three or four orders I put out after the first that I was waiting that if they lowered to $10 or $12. You weren't going to fucking do that. You're crazy, dude. You're um, fucking tripping, bro. So that's that's what I always do whenever I'm worried about it. And if you're really sending a lot of cards to PSA and you're really that worried about the extra 4 to $5 and you're like sitting there and you're like analysis paralysis, you're just not sending, put the order in, wait, you have 30 days and then just, you know, you can then decide once you see those new rates. So that's that's the Bro, advice. It was awesome. I didn't even retro help me with this actually, because I didn't even know that you could like not send cards in your submission. Like if you put them in, like I had I was doing a sub and I was like, fuck, I'm gonna have like two of these Machamp alt arts, right? In my sub. And then I got it. I didn't even have the cards in hand. Right. That was the problem is like I was waiting on an order to get in. And I'm like, shit, dude, I can't send these off until I get my last like five cards. So, many. So, so I just like put them in and then I ended up getting the Machamp alt art from in this uh, in the mail. And it was like soup. It had like this crazy scratch on the back. And I was like, fuck, man, now I can't send this. And then he's like, oh, don't worry about it. Just don't send it. And they'll don't credit your account. And I was like, oh shit, I didn't know that. I'm stupid. Like, they just send you an email and they say, oh, X, Y, or Z card wasn't in the order. And so they yeah. adjust it. And it's. I do think though, it made my cards take a little extra time in uh, like intake. At least yeah. like I kind of, it took them like two weeks to get my shit out of intake, dude. Uh, into our they, they because of that. They've been slow with the. the yeah. Research yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think that's normal. I think it's just the intake. Right. Yeah. Cause I was like, what the fuck, bro? I'm like sitting there like, when are they going to put my shit in the system, dude? Like two weeks I, has gone by. I had something similar happen to my, one of my orders. One of the ones that I had sent in that I'd, I'd waited to send for the $15. For some reason it got in, um, at under the $75 tier. Oh, and like, shit, I, I got an email saying your order is put in and it's like under this extra express tier. I was like, no, 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 no. I emailed them right yeah. away. I said, nope, do not charge me $75 for those $1 to $5 cards in the bulk order that I sent. Uh, do not do that. If you do, yeah. I will not pay it. I sent them a very, very strongly worded like email right away. And they very quickly changed it and switched the order over. And it got put in at the exact same time as my other orders that I sent in mm -hmm. at the same roughly like day or two day period of time. So... I, I personally, I'm under the impression that if they can correct a big thing like that pretty quickly yeah. and efficiently, I don't think that one little card being taken out of the account. I just thought that might be a reason. I just tried to rationalize it, I guess. But yeah, that makes I sense. Know. But like, I, I think you're good. I honestly, I, I think like, the PSA, they're running a pretty tight ship over there. Much uh, as far as like what I can see, even though they do have their miss ups and, you know, Rattle's yeah. going to do his videos on all the Beckett and all the PSA and all the CGCs every single day, slashing them for something. Bro, I saw, I, um, I saw a fucking Tyranitar hollow today. I was on eBay because I was looking for the price of some like Neo Japanese hollow. And I saw it had, it was like the Neo two or three or something like that hollow. And it was, it says Shining Tyranitar. I'm like, no, <laughs> fuck, that is not no Shining Tyranitar. And I was That's like- That's going to okay. happen with anything, you know? And the dude says low pop in the fucking listing. I was like, you got some nerve, bro. Jesus Christ. Dude, people will sell, if, if it <laughs> literally, they'll wrap up a piece of poop in, in gold foil and sell it for what, a higher price if they can. People will literally crazy. Sell, use any opportunity to sell something. Low pop. I mean, and I'm- like, no, I, I I've I've put low pop in like you know certain PSA one that's a pop one because it's not a low pop it's not technically it low pop but it is technically pop a pop one. one so I put in like pop one or low pop when it's a, a one or two population card so I've been an offender on that and yeah. I think it's fine when people do I think it's okay to clown people who do that too 
It's okay. I just think it's funny to do it for a like a an error on the like a label fuck up. I don't think that's like there's no reason to like I don't know <laughs> like garner advertise anything. That. But if that person thinks it's gonna garner a premium, I don't fault them for trying. It's just like you'll tr- people will literally try anything. I mean, he got like I remember Rock saying he actually had like somebody sell him a shiny like a coral coral mew for less because the label was messed up, and then. I saw this dude who was crazy, obviously. Like, I think that the this hollow was like a $60 PSA 9 and he had it for like 130 or something. And he's like, low pop, it's a like error tyranitar. It's like, bro, you're just not that smart. Is what I'm Yeah, <laughs> it's it's one of those things that like you're gonna see bad sellers everywhere, right? Like and and being um that I just moved over to eBay as like a full-time thing. I, you see a lot of that. Like I was already on eBay all the time, but I'm on it even more now. It's yeah. you literally see everything on eBay. You see yeah. like that someone posting a Charizard, like a beat up base set Charizard saying like near mint $999, you know, because they saw that it was a PSA, whatever was worth that. Beauty goods. And it is in fact not yeah and and it's like you see all kinds and then you see people posting things for like super super low like i actually just purchased potentially a a really ridiculously uh, a terrible either a really bad or a really good purchase there was a really horribly worded um auction that was ending on a firework pattern charizard it was they didn't title it firework they didn't title it charizard they didn't tell Pokemon. They misspelled Pokemon. They left out like the O. Oh, so it's P K M M O N. So it was like all this bad listings. The air, the picture was from like up here at like a weird angle. And I think in the title it said like it, it said like card or something, but it didn't say trading card or TCG. So it was very mis- for your dog. horribly labeled. Right. There was no one bidding on it and so i i picked it up i bid on it and i got it for like 30 bucks it was a freaking legendary collection charizard reverse is it real i don't know we'll see when it gets here the pictures are bad and i've seen fake ones that are terrible but i paid 30 bucks for this thing and it's you know, kind of worth the gamble at least i, mean, I felt like for 30 dollars on an off it's terrible and, and that wasn't necessarily anything that was just a badly worded thing yeah. so like if it comes in it's fake whatever 30 bucks no big deal you just get to give you your money back it yeah. has buyer protection for those types of situations if it's legitimately like not the card or if they just don't send the card or they've already sent it it'll be here by next week and and i'll be yeah. showing it off if it's actually real but it's just one of those things that like you see really good sellers on ebay you see people who have no business being on ebay yeah, yeah, yeah. this in particular was a case of someone who's a garage sale reseller they had a ton of feedback they sold typically. I looked at their. They did auctions on everything. It was all like. They have any more thing. legendary collection, bro? The fuck. They had three other Pokemon cards, and they were all real. And this was the only legendary collection. They had like a a hollow Sizor from uh, Neo Destiny, mm-hmm. like a beat up one, and they were all just in top loaders, not in sleeves, on a mm-hmm. table taken up from like someone who at a garage sale who goes to a garage sale, auctions everything they find from the same spot. And this is the account. And so I bought from them thinking maybe it's possibly. And these are licks you can possibly make by just being in it and grinding, right? But that was just the fact of an eBay seller who knew what they were doing selling on eBay because they have tons of good feedback and they sell all the time. But they don't know what they're doing selling like Pokemon cards. And that's why sometimes it's important to niche down and know what you're doing rather than when you're a general reseller being like an everything seller where you're literally selling. Okay, daily refinement, Jesus oh, sorry, Christ. Yeah. I already no, listened to the podcast this week. I've yeah. got it not. <laughs> but can't, I can't point. go anywhere without daily refinement following. <laughs> I swear to God. Oh, get it from Dan, Dan now I'm getting it from God. Everything, but huh? it's got a, he's got a good point. Like being in the niche, you have to know your niche so that you can really capitalize on your profit. Like, from someone take it from me i sell psa ones right i would love to see people try to emulate and do what i do on the (laughs) same level that i do because i've seen the plays people try to do plays and like i've heard 
anecdotal plays for one's flounder. And I've seen yeah. them flounder, <laughs> but I've also know my own success rate with them and why. And it has everything to do with me understanding the market of what's happening Whereas people will try to get into it, they're like, they see these things. I'm like, oh shit, this is easy. They have you no just idea. Bend that Charizard. Like, Shut the fuck up. You bend Charizard and Charizard you make money. What the fuck are we talking about, dude? And so, you and so and acting that's like the this thing, like, if you are can do so much better than just literally being in every, doing everything and trying to capitalize on every little thing. So that's the point. It's you, you gotta specialize yeah, yeah. Okay, sometimes. Yeah. And that means leaving ben money on the table. Ben Charizards to make money. Okay. But yes, Ben Charizards to make money. Keep doing, do that, whatever. I don't even have any Charizards in my inventory right now. Literally okay. not a single Charizard. <laughs> I, I think them. I like I, it. it is funny for sure because it's like the PSA one thing but I get what you're saying and I don't know that's why I was telling you like with the Japanese stuff it's like dude if you don't like it and you're not into it like don't force yourself okay, into it you know what I mean because yeah like, maybe you'll buy the wrong thing or whatever like you can't like so much of the arbitrage that comes out of this stuff like or I don't know, like you just have to understand, like you have to love this shit, whatever it is you're doing, like you have to love the IP, you have to love the car, like you have to just, you have to be passionate and love it. That what you yeah. just said is so important. And that's, and that's, I think the general, what we're kind of getting at is saying is like, it's, you can do whatever, like you could do all of these things, you could do yeah. all of it. But like there's not hundreds of things you can do in the hobby. And yeah. If you don't love it, what, what, you like. what the hell is the point? You got to love what you do. Like, I, I sat back this last week and I processed 25,000. You see that? Cards. You see all that, those boxes in the back of Josh? It's there's, disgusting. There's, more Look back at here. there's three or four more back here. And I've sold off about 16,000 of that. And there's still probably another 20,000 I need to process through. This is just literally what my life has been for the last week. One week of time. Because yeah, give us the bulk breakdown. How, yeah. how is this all working out? How's Hold this on. All I can anyway, hear you. I'm going to go get a watching this car in, we, we at the old card shop, I at the old card shop, uh, the royal we, uh, we are doing bulk to a certain extent because, well, various reasons. Um, over the course of the last five to seven or five to six years since I've been ripping packs and even before when I've like intermittently had a bunch of like extra from my older collection, I've had a ton of bulk and I've never really processed it before and I've never had the time or effort to really be able to. I've lately been doing mostly all eBay. Uh, I had to switch over my old eBay, shut down that whole account, which we'll get into that in a moment, I'm sure. Um, and and move it to a new account. And so I'm doing my daily 10 listings a day or whatever and just moving it over onto my new account. And so I have a lot of extra free time because I don't stream or whatever. And so I have all this extra bulk laying around. I've been trying to turn my buying off a little bit before Dallas because I'm going to intake a lot of a lot of inventory in Dallas. Like every time oh, I go okay. to a Collecticon, I'm okay. going to I always say I'm going to buy. But every time I go to Collecticon, I buy a little bit more, like a little more. And like I take more collections in, I do more trades, I do more and more and more. And that's what I'm anticipating. You're trying to, sorry, real quick, like you're trying to buy raw to like break down, you're saying like you're trying to buy like a big raw collection and then break stuff down mainly or like what do you usually get? Yeah, I'm trying to buy fun? everything at Dallas, like literally anything that comes to my table and everything. If it's a good opportunity, I don't want to say no to it. So I'm cutting back my buying right now, this time of the month. I mean, what with there's taxes, what with a whole bunch of other like travel expenses coming up and everything. I'm just not buying as much right now. So I have a little extra time with my eBay. Or I'm switching things over. I'm just kind of prepping, getting my, I'm not trying to sell through my inventory too quickly that I have so that I can have a lot of good stuff for Dallas, for my table. I don't want to go empty handed. I should have one more sub coming back from PSA. One of those $15 subs from last month should be back before Dallas. I'm expecting it's in QA, right? QA1 right now so if it can get to me like right before dallas that'd be nice but i don't have to rely on that so i'm not selling through my inventory very quickly and so i have a lot of extra bulk like thousands and thousands and recently my distributor who works and sells through uh mostly to amazon and a few of his smaller accounts like his game store accounts and stuff 
he has a lot of returns come back from Amazon just from people returning cards or whatever that as a bulk, like as a, a distributor for Amazon, he just takes returns again. And so he has tons of bulk. And so I have a, a sweetheart deal with him where he was just basically just throwing it away or just giving it away or he had nothing to do with it. I provided him a way to offload it and get some money for it. And, and I can get it at a really cheap rate where it's a win-win for both of us. So like I just took in even more bulk with the last time I saw him unexpectedly because it was like, oh, why not? And I'm going to try out, I think, going into the bulk selling rate rare um, game. Not so much like like old school does, like a full time thing. But like I just separated the hollows out in the last week, like all the hollows, all the codes and all the reverse hollows so that I could sell those separately and get whatever I was going to get for it. And I kept every single trainer in the entire lot. Because as I was going through, I took the trainers out. Because, like, I know that, like, trainers actually move at that, like, 10 to 25 cent to, like, 75 cent rate. They will actually move in bulk on TCG Player if you have a large store. So one of these boxes is actually entirely full of only trainers. Nice. And then another one is halfway full of only trainers. It's all going to get sorted out in probably the next week, just into deregulation block and then all the new regulation going forward so that I can just get all the old trainers that nobody's going to use and just kind of get them out. And I'll probably bulk those out. And I'm actually going to, I think, sort out just the sword and shield trainers that are of the, the current regulation block. And I'm going to spend the next week or so just before Collecticon to keep Figuring myself busy. Not, I don't want to buy. I don't want to buy anything. And I want to add to my inventory and potentially build out my store. I'm going to put all trainers on my store. And, and I also took all the hollows too, which will sell probably for like 25 cent, to maybe a dollar, maybe a little more on some of them. And there's some old ones too, like Sun and Moon. And I personally think that hollows have the potential to sell for a dollar or a dollar or more of old sets of Sword and Shield, Sun and Moon, of any of these older sets when set collectors go back and they eventually they stop, you know, because people just throw away the hollows when they're and they go back and do their master sets. You're not looking for a PSA 10. You're just looking for a hollow to throw in your binder to put in to fill in there. I guarantee I can get a dollar out of some of these hollows eventually just by like literally listing them slowly, 99 cents just tagged on to an order instead of bulking it out for like seven or eight cents, you know, and it's worth the 10 X, even if it sits for X amount of time on the TCG store. And so I've been really dealing with a lot of bulk this last week. And, and you can't do that shit if you don't really love it. Like, is it, it like I'm waiting for gradings? Yeah, I'm still grading. I'm still like doing my daily eBay, like grinding looking at that's how I got the Charizard I'm still watching my my auctions and everything and watching the market but like it keeps me and gives me something to do during this In time before collecting yeah, yeah. so I don't just go and blow all my load buying when I need to spend that money in Dallas, you know, on good collections that I see in person and everything. Because like, look, I mean, being liquid is very important. And we can all just say like, yeah, yeah, be liquid, be liquid. But like, it's hard sometimes, like when there's so much good opportunity, like I literally, I could have bought another case of these damn, ju these, um, what are they? The Clara and Cyrus. Cyrus boxes. Yeah, those yeah. things for like probably half the price that I could have gotten it for again. But I was like thinking to myself, like, you need to stop. Like, you need to stop buying this modern stuff because there's going to be so many good opportunities. So like, I'm getting into bulk now. It's been fun because it's given me something to do. Like, just to, as I'm watching through my animes or, you know, listen to music, hanging out with my fiance. We're like, I'm just sorting through bulk and sorting through the trainers and everything. And um, I, I do think it'll be eventually lucrative, especially if you do it the right way, you price it competitively. Um, and it just like, I, I just did a, a little bit today and I have like seven or eight sales on my TCG player. I mean, they're all under $5 sales, but like, that's just bulk shit. Like to sell $20 worth of bulk, that's a whole box. That's literally <laughs> a box of that. That's $20 after shipping. So like you can sell Wait, five really, or really quick. Really quick, you said you sold like eleven thousand cards already, or something. Like, did you yeah. bulk those out? And how? Yes. Like, how are you selling as? So, like, do you have some a game store or like who? 
I don't know if I'm doing this wrong or whatever <laughs> I'm doing. Wrong, but, like, I got all the trainers and literally all the Pokemon, like the stuff that I would you would think you would want. I just literally that's both. And so the person I sold like 16,000 cards to got not a single Pokemon trainer in that bulk. It was all just Pokemon bulk. And that may be a good thing. Maybe there's Pokemon people buy. But to me, that's something that I don't think a lot of people talk about is like people don't buy bulk Pokemon, I don't believe. I think people buy some Pokemon that are playable in the game that are not. But most of the playable Pokemon, they're either hollows, they're rares, or they're Vs, Vmax, you know, they're they're the more ultra rarity things. So like in bulk, you know, people aren't needing like the regular commons and uncommons and they're paying five cents for those. But they're paying no, it's 15... just expensive, dude. Like the Inteleon line got really expensive. Those yeah. were like fucking two bucks a pop for like exactly. a so there are some hollows, and there are some uncommons in those that will pop off. But like I sold all those the just most to online bulk buyer. I just found the highest rate to answer your question. I found the highest rate on Facebook Marketplace. I went into the search bar, went into my groups. I put in bulk buy or, or buying bulk. And, and then I went to the newest, highest rated person who was buying what I was selling. And I sold the most I could. And I shipped it in a big, huge box. And I literally had to pay over $100 to ship the two huge boxes of bulk that I shipped to him. And it was probably only like four hundred, three or four hundred dollars worth of bulk, you know. So, but it, it was not something that I was willing to process. You gotta, I gotta send you this video, man. Like you could fit, I can't remember what it was, but I think you could fit like four thousand cards in a uh, large flat rate priority, and I think those are like thirty bucks. To those ship, are like maybe? yeah, and so you could only fit. I had 16,000 cards, so it would have taken about four of those. And so it's, it's about so, like so I did two big boxes and it was under 100 rather than four flat rate boxes. Um, it was yeah. about the and it was easier to pack that way, too. So like I I trust me, like with when it comes to shipping bulk flat rate boxes filled completely to the brim is most likely going to be the cheapest best rate of going but ups ground in a big box ship you know packed the right way can right. somewhat be the same it could be yeah. similar and if you have the right size boxes which i had some really big boxes that i needed and i had etb boxes that i used to box it up in as well to help it keep it a little bit more bundled yeah. Um, but like, it felt great to offload all of it just because it was things that I knew I was never going to load on my TCG player, just like garbage to me. Yeah, and right. I'm sure someone's going to do something with it and enjoy it. Um, but the stuff that I wanted out of it, I took all the hollows, the reverses and all the, the yeah. stuff that I thought might be worth my time to think about possibly processing. So like, I am, I, I will report back in the next podcast, how it's gone, because like, it's going to oh, take me a good week longer to process through the trainers that I have. And like, cause I have to sort them now. Cause now I just literally as quickly, I was mindlessly doing this as I was doing other tasks. Yeah. The process of actually sorting and listing on TCG player for bulk is a much, uh, much more in depth and it's going to take a little bit more of my concentration and it's going to be more of a chore. And so like yeah. having to actually sort out, what I'll have to do is just sort them by regulation block, then sort them by price. I'm not going to list anything that's not worth an X amount, you know, to make it worth my time. It's just going to be a, a little project that I do for the next couple of weeks, probably, to, to bide my time for the, the convention. Give me the heebie-jeebies. And, like, you can't do that unless you really love the shit. And and I, I'm actually excited about that, kind of, because it's it's more passive selling. And I'm really enjoying the passive selling that I'm getting on eBay. So like recently, my eBay... Uh, selling. You still got to pack that shit, dude. I mean, yeah, you got to sell it and pack it. But like waking up in the morning to like five or six orders that I get... That does order, feel good. It, it feels, feels fantastic. Like even if it's like 10 or 20 orders, I feel like it's still going to feel fantastic. Because like when I'm done with those five or six orders and then I do my eBay orders and I'm done, like... And then like, I would feel like I would rather have more orders to do, you know? So yeah. like, I'm always okay with increasing my workload when it comes to me making more money and having more that's going to grow my business and I get feedback from it and like yeah. all this good stuff that comes out of that and like recognition, maybe I get a new customer that comes back and like, 
you know, buys a bigger amount next time and all these things that are good. So, so like, I, well, you're going to get, think, you're going to get better over time too. Like right now, you might not know which trainers are worth your time, but you look up the same trainer a couple times on TCG player and go, okay, this is a 50 cent card. And you're going to be able to sort through boxes of bulk and be like, not worth my time, not worth my, like, you know what I mean? Like you're going to get quicker at it. Like I'm sure up front it's like really daunting and overwhelming. Cause that's just a lot of stuff to remember. And right. you know, playability is like a whole new thing to learn, but over time, like you're probably going to get pretty fast and efficient at it. And with that kind of volume, man, I mean, if you're making 50%, 40% on, you know, 16,000 cards, like even if it, you know, you're making mm -hmm. five, 10 cents, like that stuff adds up big time, you know, and then you start scaling that volume exponentially. Like I think, yeah, I, I definitely think the bulk, uh, bulk definitely, definitely prints. So I'm it's one of those you things you would that. never think about because like, I also do graded and I also like the larger margins, but like, just as someone who like doesn't actively sell anymore, like as another avenue, like I, I totally wish I had Troll and Toad. Like Troll and Toad Evo seemed like the literal best, easiest, <laughs> coolest thing to ever be involved with. I understand that you had to like do a lot to get involved with the program before. And it's not just easy money. It's not just like send loads of whatever to Troll and Toad and it sells. But like, it feels like from what I've been told, it's just someone processing your bulk and it's like slowly sells for more than what market rate is. And like, it's just they're shutting it down next year. Yeah, They're taking it down though, though. So yeah, I have heard that, but that being said, even without troll and toad, like without that, I feel like there is enough of a market for that kind of stuff that like, it's gotta be worth it to a certain extent. And like to sell one of those, even if I never buy one, I could sell that whole box for $20. I wasn't kidding. That's what that would sell for, full right. of unsorted, whatever bulk. There are five five to seven to 10 cards, or, you know, maybe 20, 30 cards that will sell in that box for that much. And then you have all the extra shit. And there's probably more than that. So, like, I definitely think that there is, speaking of, like, leaving money on the table, like, there's money to be made there. And, like, it's just a matter of work and a matter of processing. Like, I... <laughs> And now I have a little more time than I had before. So I never would have thought to do that before because my time was ate up. But like, yeah. I have a little extra time. And it Bro, you probably make more than that than you do breaking fucking packs. Honestly, like, isn't it? Like, I mean, what the fuck? You make a dollar a pack or something, whatever it is. Well, like, yeah, I mean, and you had 50 to break cents a, a fucking pack. You can make 50 cents like in five, like in 10 seconds going through that fucking bulk pile. And and it's just a matter of like, just I get to sit and watch TV while I'm doing it. And like, and as things sell, you know, I don't have to be sitting screaming at a screen with like 30 people or 20 people, or whatever, you know, the, the faltering well, numbers. You don't, that, gotta, you don't have to take pictures. You just have to sort it. And then you can just select quantity 200 or 400 yeah. or whatever. And you make so one listing no pictures. And yeah. And, and it feels good because like, it's also servicing a part of the, the market that I personally am more comfortable with. You know, how I feel about slabs and grading and like, I think collectors are fantastic in the market, but I, Does the PSA ones. <laughs> uh-huh yeah. you know how i feel As about he's talking his ones and <laughs> but i personally think that the plastic cards and plastic is a house of cards and i personally I think, think old card shop is a house of cards like uh, well, yeah obviously it's literally a house of cards down. But like the fact that players are using the cards and collectors are putting it in their binders and I'm like I'm able to service that element of the market by serving bulk out is like it feels better and more organic to me than selling slabs for super inflated rates, even though I know that people love that and that's where the it just feels less organic. And I'm gonna sit here until the day I die. And say that I think it's wild that people literally want their cards in plastic. But hey, whatever. It is what it is. I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to make money off of it. But it feels better to me selling bulk to players and selling hollows to binder collectors to people just trying to get cheap, you know, to fill out their collections, to enjoy the cards. Not He's necessarily like making stock, 10 you know? cents, not $10. I yeah, so that it. feels good to me, I guess, it, even if it's less margins, maybe in more like bulk regards. Um, it's like, it That's good. I think Speaking the margin of... percentage is really high, but the margin, like, but again, 
that's just when you're starting out. Like once you snowball to 50,000, 80,000, 100,000 cards, like the margin is still nuts. And if you're able to offload that kind of, I mean, that's. And that's not even talking about TCG direct. Like if I ever got into like another program or Troll and Toad Evo opened up or someone took over where Troll and Toad Evo, like they carried the torch for them. Right. Some other company, not saying that's going to happen, but like if anything, I think does... eBay after buying TCG player, I think eBay could like do a whole like they could integrate TCG players like whole system and have it so that it made sense to like list low value cards on eBay and you could set like high quantity and maybe they would give you like stock images like TCG player does like. Yeah, so I'm not even taking any of that into account when I'm thinking about going into bulk. I'm just thinking like, hey, I have a good line on really cheap bulk that literally it was just being thrown away before. I have a lot of time. I don't want to spend money buying a bunch of shit before the Collecticon. And so like it feels like an avenue that and I also have a level four TCG player account, which means I can list an unlimited amount of things in my store which it takes the time to build that up, which you can only list like 20 things at first. So like, I don't have to go into it blindly with no feedback or anything. I I don't know what I would, I couldn't do that. I don't think like I, most people couldn't, you'd have to build up. Like I remember when I first started my store, it was really difficult getting my first few sales and like getting that first 20 to get to the level two was a big deal. Then getting to like, I think a hundred for level three, three was a big deal and then you had to get to like a thousand or like whatever the amount is to get to jump the levels um it was really tough so like i don't have to do any of that because i'm already a level four like 100 percent feedback good awesome. I've been selling but so it's just some something that i've thought about doing just this last week that i've been doing just to kind of pass the time and it feels good because i'm also doing like spring cleaning around my house like i bought a bunch of those like big wire racks to like start organizing things more and like oh, yeah. it feels good getting that bulk out you know and like i found bring dude, up your closet space yeah in my closet i found a ta- a dan time capsule that was worth over a thousand dollars of pokemon oh, that i completely yeah. forgot about that i was like oh uh-huh. i remember putting this in here i guess i could just put it back in but hell maybe i'll bring it to collecticon now or something i found a bunch of old like x and y sealed collection boxes from like in the very beginning of my days when I wasn't buying and selling on whatnot I was just buying and throwing it in my closet and then I started selling uh, on whatnot and it got so far in my closet it was just like a you know a freaking time capsule so I found that when I was cleaning stuff fire. it's um you know cleaning's fun so um do your spring cleaning. And sometimes you make money when you clean sometimes you get thousands and thousands of bulk cards out of your house and someone pays you hundreds of a couple hundred bucks for it and you find a time capsule a thawie. yeah a, 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 a more so it's, it's not bad so um the bulk seems fun i like the idea of servicing a different level of the market that's like not something that i'm super uncomfortable with even though i still work in it because like i don't even sell packs to break for people anymore I strictly, my business is almost exclusively moved to graded cards. And for me, that's very uncomfortable. I do not feel comfortable with that. And so I'm doing what I can to mitigate that that feeling a little bit and move more into something that I feel a little bit more comfortable in. Um, And that being said, I'm also developing like, I don't want to say like exactly, but like I'm trying to think of a way that I can offer something to the Pokemon community that's not currently really offered um, that much. And so like, what are we talking, Joshi? Yeah, I like like the idea of like being someone like other streamers source of like distribute, like kind of like a not a Rudy Alpha investment situation because I don't have that kind of clout or that kind of like buying power to have like a ton of inventory. But, like, mm-hmm. being able to, like, supply streamers, like, with a case yeah. of the new set of, like, ETBs, a case of, uh, like, booster boxes, like, a blisters, like, a, a set amount of product for a good price that benefits them so that they don't have to worry about getting these crazy markups if, if a set, like, goes to uh-huh. the moon and pre-orders go crazy or they don't have to worry about not getting product. So, like, it is set up some sort of a subscription-type basis where I I work with streamers or I work with people who want to get regular product and I can kind of use my connection and my distributor access to kind of make a small profit, but also 
help other like like consistent like a piece. yeah so like yeah. that's what i'm developing also while i'm still buying from my distributor like i'm not selling on whatnot anymore so i'm not like selling a lot of modern product because i'm not trying to sell against p football p like i i can't compete with can't that do guy. It, can't do so it. um so i'm looking at other avenues so like yeah. that's something I've been developing like behind the scenes trying to put together but like it would really have to be something that was worth it for both myself and the person buying because like that's why what I'm saying I don't know how that's possible really like a lot of it would have to be a price thing like it would have to be such like a competitive price but it was also like something that I could guarantee a, a product and like it's almost like a Rudy situation I just don't know if he, anyone that's not P football P or like like Mason has trouble getting product. Like, I don't, I don't know how, like it's an extra case here and there. Like that's not, I mean, like getting product super is significant. as much of an issue for me is as much as getting a lot of product. Cause I can right. get product, but it's like, I don't want to move my product because if I sell my product at the market price right now, it's essentially, you're making $2. I'm making yeah. like two to $5 or whatever. And it's just not worth it. So like, I don't want to stop buying either modern okay, products. Yeah, okay. So, so like, you want to keep like the line open basically. Yeah. Like, so like, uh, and I'm also not trying to like just dump it and like lose money just to keep the line open. So like I'm, I'm slowly kind of developing what I can find avenues to like move product, maybe locally or maybe to like certain streamers. I set up like a, a regular kind of situation with. So it's just something that I've been developing that um, I'm, possibly toying with the idea of in my head that's smart in case you get a good set come around that you want like a lot of also you might be able to get better allocations for it which is good and it's right now like modern selling modern sealed is not very profitable if you're mm. not breaking it as a breaker like it's just right, not, it's I mean. like you're tying up thousands of dollars to make fifty dollars you know what i mean so i would personally rather with my capital tie up thousands of dollars in grading fees of capital instead of thousands of dollars in modern sealed product yeah. to then potentially, you know, two X, three X, or even 20%, 30% on my gains of the graded rather than modern where you're making $50 on a case of boosters that you're shipping out. So like, yeah. so that's, that's another reason that I'm looking at other avenues because like my traditional avenues of breaking which were, you know, not hugely profitable. As you mentioned, you're making 50 cents to a dollar a pack. That's yeah. still more than what you're doing, selling it just, you know, by the case on. That's true, actually. Or, yeah. You know, via to someone. So it, it's a matter of, um, it's just a matter of it's moving. Like time value and like. Yeah. And like, where where is your money best spent, capital, like tied up and like. And like it's the connection you make with distributors is is incredibly beneficial when sure things are ripping, but like things are ripping, but they're ripping in Japanese and like modern English is it's ripping, but you can't buy any of the stuff that's ripping. It, that was all like you had to buy that when shit wasn't ripping. So it isn't as cut and dry as some YouTubers would like to make it with like buy modern Pokemon, you always win every time. It's like. It is if you literally buy it, forget about it, and come back when the market's ripping. But you could very easily buy it, forget about it, and come back right at a reprint or right when the market's not ripping. And you wanted to free up that thousand dollars of capital you had, and that thousand dollars of capital turned into six hundred dollars of capital just because of the month of the year it was in yeah. and the sentiment of that. And it's easy to say, well, don't have to sell. Well, then don't have to sell. Just the, the easy thing is don't how, stop it. How, what a beautiful thing not having to sell but it's mm. fun to say nice. don't sell when you need to sell i think i think that the people maybe saying like don't sell it's like they're looking at it from the get-go as an investment not really like a business model because like as a business right. model you're absolutely right like you got to keep the cash you know, rocking and rolling. You can't just sit on you. You can't buy 
you know, tons of cases of modern boosters to sit on them for six to nine months, hoping that you're going to see X amount of like that. That's just not, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. It's, when, I, when you're talking about like, from my perspective, I'm obviously singing a different tune than when I was on whatnot, because when I was on whatnot, I'm getting a case. I literally am begging for more because I'm selling it in the first week or two. It's gone. Right. And so it's a totally different situation. I've still got my scarlet and violet allocation from the first wave. And my distributor is asking me if I want more now too. And I'm like, I'll take more bulk. <laughs> it's like, uh, but I'll take more bulk. More bulk yeah, is the like, darkest thing I've ever <laughs> For that, because I know I, I, I get you. It's out printing. A lot but... more on yeah. that than uh... I can on I never thought I'd see the fucking day, dude. That's so dark. I mean, I, I feel you, man. I think, uh, I don't know. It, it is tough because obviously like you were able to like sell tons of packs or whatever. And like that was the business model. So it is difficult to pivot. But I, I think the bulk like is a smart, that is like a business model. You know, like I definitely think that that's. That's super that's scalable reason. and super yeah. doable for most oh, and, I, and I feel people. better about it. I feel a lot better about it too. Yeah. So yeah. Feels better, guys. That's good. He feels morally. <laughs> he's in the right now. He has seen the light. And no more. <laughs> no more PSA ones. We'll hit the market. Whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. No, 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 no. The PSA ones, we love the PSA ones here. Okay, the PSA ones are fantastic. I think, I think what you're doing, I think what you're doing with like the spring cleaning though, and just like selling through stuff that you have or whatever. Like I think that that's that's good, you know, because you're just building yeah. up your cash buffer. Like you're getting, and like you said, I mean, you had like I don't even know what those Xbox collection boxes are, but I imagine that's a few hundred dollars. It's like you just yeah. have that sitting there that you could have used to put into something else you know what i'm saying i completely so. forgot like i had already sold through a ton of that shit that i had gotten more of but that was stuff that i had bought in the beginning i just threw in my closet i was like oh that's <laughs> it was in the such early days of me that i was literally still investing in the stash yeah. mode yeah. yeah i was like i wasn't in the whole like total flip i was like had a collection i was like i like these boxes like it was like you know charizard <laughs> some cool EC before collected. Like. Yeah. So like it was, it's funny, but um, it, it's just one of those things. I think that a lot of sellers, especially like if you ever go through a change, like we just went through, like I just went through, like, and it was on me, totally on me. Like I put myself through the ringer that I'm going through right now. Like uh, I will say that it's been very, very cathartic and it's been a very good journey for me to do this. And it's been very like eye opening in a lot of ways. And, 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 you know, because I talk a lot about like how I feel morally and ethically, I have to be able to sleep at night. Like I am more so, I care a lot about my oh, self and my honor. Oh, dude, what okay. is this turning into? And I freaking hate, that, okay, the, the bear has a heart and everything. It's so God. cute. The it's teddy not, bear with the I feel better heart. about selling the not mm -hmm. having to do like you know not working in a, a platform that I no, feel. I like feel you. What not is? Yeah, 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 we get that. We get that. We get that. Yeah. So like it feels good that so I'm just talking with you, bro. It was a little bit of a hardship doing that change and changing the business yeah. model it felt like it's a good move and like i will say the new ebay like i recently my i wanted to go into this because i think that this could help someone um this story about ebay tell them, tell them joshy but but like there recently my old ebay the old card shop is an old you know it's had it since 2013 it's not something that i ever put full time or full amount of my energy into because i was always selling on other platforms but i always had like you know 10 20 listings up on it just things listed way too high that i wanted to be there you know things that i wanted to have as a uh, a reference point but not something that would actually sell and so like i didn't sell often i would occasionally run auctions i would have things up like my slow king, my PSA nine first appearance slow king, <laughs> that was on my eBay for like three grand for like ever. And that was not a three grand card, obviously, but it was just a showpiece, you know? I didn't intend to use it to sell, but occasionally I would. I would sell through auctions. I'd, I'd run a few little like, I'd get collections and I wouldn't want to deal with them in singles because I didn't do singles. So I just run it and whatnot, or I'd run it on eBay. Apparently there was a auction block that I ran 
a long, like last year, sometime during the year when I wasn't doing eBay as much, that I, after the block ended and after the auctions didn't get paid for, I had to cancel and relist and auction again, like three or four items from the same block. And instead of clicking, apparently the right little drop down menu, little thing that when you go to cancel and relist a, an auction, I listed out of stock and then relisted instead of listing buyer didn't pay and oh, then relist. Yeah. And it put a ding, four dings on my eBay four account, days. which had a hundred percent feedback. No ever an issue. Literally no, no one ever had any problems. I never had any. And it put four secret dings on my account <laughs> last year. And so I just recently, this last month, moved over full time to eBay from my whatnot. And so I was much more paying attention to my eBay, looking at analytics, looking at all the, you know, the, the, I was looking a lot more closely at the eBay. And I noticed I wasn't a top rated seller. It said I was a below standard seller. And I was like, what the, what yeah. the fuck? I was like, below standard? I am not a below standard seller. <laughs> And so I couldn't figure out where it was. I couldn't find negative feedback. I didn't have any like items. It was it was just below standard. So I had to make a meeting. I called eBay and like I talked to one of the representatives and like I literally sat there and talked to them and they found for me, they had to dig through in my old auctions, the dings, what the issues were that were bringing me to below standard. And since it was so long ago, it was past three months because it was such a long time ago, there was nothing that they could do. And I asked them, I was like, well, what was the issue? Because I didn't even remember what this. And they looked into it. They were unpaid auctions. I said, well, can you possibly see if I, because I remember that auction block. It's annoying when auctions don't get paid for, but you just keep it rolling. You relist it. And I relisted it. And I said, oh, can you see that I relisted it afterwards from unpaid? And he's like, oh, I can see that. But there's literally nothing I can do. He said, okay. I said, all right, well, shoot, that sucks. So what does that do to my account? Because like, what are the ramifications? Is that why I'm below standard? He said, oh, absolutely. That's why, you know, you have these dings. They'll go away in July, he said, because as, you, as long as you do everything right, like you've been doing, he said, they go away in nine months or something or whatever the certain amount of time is. I was like, well, cool. But since you can see that this was from an unpaid auction and all this stuff, what is this doing to my account? Is there something you can do to help me? Because is this going to... I asked him straight up. I said, what penalties does this apply to my account? He said, well, other than the 6% added fee that gets tagged on. Uh, and I said, what? I said, excuse me? 6%? He said, well, yes. And, and for below standards, I Mark's said. I your been 25%. The fuck and I so said, laughing. What? And he said, well, yeah, a below standard seller has an extra six and I, for certain, uh, certain. And I said, how much is the total fee that I've been paying in this last month or two months? I've been, you know, cooking on my eBay, switching everything over. And he told me I almost had an aneurysm. And I, I sat there and I said, well, sir, I would really like I do this. I said, I recently switched platforms to eBay and I really she like eBay. Care, bro. And I really care about my account. I said, is there anything I can do? He said, you can wait till July and keep it rolling <laughs> and keep doing good until then. Or he literally said, or you might want to start a new account. Oh shit. Yeah. I was like, I couldn't believe it because I, I was like, holy crap. I've been playing not only on hard mode, but I've been because the algorithm was screwing me from not because like not being Would a Would you like to tell the audience what the name of your new account is? It's the worst name, by the way. Let me <laughs> so tell bad. the people okay. and then I'll roast so, so I had to make a new account. And so for anyone who is sitting here and you're you're not very active on your eBay and you don't really know what make sure you look at your analytics once in a while. I should have been. This is very much so on me. Like this is a comedy of errors. Like I should have been aware of this long before and so I, I luckily only had to deal with about a month of this of me actually selling before I realized and then corrected <laughs> yeah. but 
But this can save someone the issue. When you get an auction, when you get a, a buy it now that doesn't get paid for and you have to relist to that item, it usually you have to wait four or five days before you get this specific op option. You have to wait until the final, like after the, the final like payment reminder gets sent out for eBay before you can relist that item and auction it again. Unless the buyer specifically asks to cancel yeah. it, basically. If they request to cancel it, then you can basically cancel it and have no issues or whatever. But but you can't ever cancel it without using that correct little drop down if you don't want to ding on your account. And they will ding you. And they will make it very well known. You, it's not obvious what the, the penalties are. So like, and it's very hard. It takes like nine months. Well, it's not very hard. If you are, if you're quick about it, you can contact eBay. I would have seen this right when it happened and I was like selling regularly on eBay and I caught it. They would have within, you know, 90 days been able to reverse it. They won't do that for you multiple times. They'll only do that a couple of times because it's if you do it once, you know, that's fine. But if you do it twice and three times, they're going to see you're kind of maybe doing some shady things and that's not cool. But like if it's an obvious mistake that they can see, they should be able to correct it. For most people, this isn't going to be an issue because you can see it within you know, the time period. Right. But if you don't, for some reason, see it between the time period, you're screwed. I had to make a new account. So to save yourself from having to make a new account, just go ahead and mark those items as, you know, buyer didn't pay as correctly as you can. And report it, them for Dan's sake. Yeah, it will literally penalize you otherwise. But anyway, my new name of my new account is Selling Bags. So you guys can check me so out. So fucking bad. bad I want to punch you. I saw that and I was like, bro, are you fucking dumb? Like, so I thought we talked about this. My eBay oh, has been cooking, messaging. Literally cooking since I, and it has nothing to do with the name. Literally people don't read the name. The only thing people care about is being the lowest listed. You think some neck beard ass. It's someone who's gonna no, buy I'm Josh, it's your it. business, it's your storefront. Would you put it's selling often. bags on your storefront? No, like so don't selling bags. <laughs> I'm selling also bags. If you there are loungefly bags, which are literal bags on my account as well, but there are Pokemon <laughs> bags as well. There, there are designer bags and then there are other bags. But I have some Pokemon Center. Plastic bags. Y'all like. don't gotta hate. Y'all don't gotta hate on my great name. You, you took the sixty nine jokes it. too far this time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, selling bags is my eBay name, folks. You guys can check me out. Um, okay, I'm telling you this. I hate that name, and I hated Retro's thumbnail for that last video. I love you, but I hate that thumbnail. Listen, <laughs> I see that. Damned if you do. <laughs> Damned if you don't listen. If I if I didn't use an Ernie thumbnail, I was gonna forever lose a friend. <laughs> I use the thumbnail, I'm losing a friend, you know. So uh, I'm just like many guys, faces of Ernito, but yeah, you know. We talk about these things. I just don't think it's smart to like. You can change your name every like thirty days, so I would. I will just be changing my name. Oh my like, god, I mean, dude! Change it to the old shop. card shop with underscores. I, I may be go back to the old card shop um, when I delete my formally delete my old account because it takes 14 days to actually delete your old eBay account once you actually get rid of it. So like I have to go through that process before I can get my old name back if I even wanted it. But I don't want it. I'm going to keep my same. I'm going to keep selling bags like I honestly and 100 percent legitimately do not think it matters at all people only care about lowest price if anyone looks though that's all i'm saying you don't want to be branded as the bag dude like what the fuck are we talking, what are you talking about what is, what's you wrong? literally were just like yeah well i, I love, love the both. community yeah i love the community i, I have to sleep at night how are these not mutually exclusive like oh what are we talking gosh. about i can love the community and i can sell them bags at the same time literally what do we do i, we I have to be able to sleep at night guys okay. shut the fuck up i'm just because people want to lie to themselves and say that these slabs that they're buying are not bad oh it's my god my, josh it's not my problem okay uh, josh ocs ocs 2.0 old card shop with underscores listen 
We're not once doing sell and stops, buy. Once my eBay stops getting regular sales, then I'll, I'll can you think please, about... Everyone, please do not buy from Josh. If you're on... Don't do worry. Not nobody buy on these podcasts are buying from me. Literally nobody is. Like, all these... I'm just, saying, I'm just trying to discourage that. anyone that would. That's all. That's all. Uh, I get a lot of, like... Um, international buyers actually, which is interesting. Like I, I for find ones or for what the ones go more um domestically, but it's more like <laughs> the tens that go internationally. But I I also sell some nines internationally too. I've even I've even started branching out and selling nines on my eBay lately. So it's it's kind of, it's kind of been a a big thing for me. Like I used to only do ones and tens, but now I've gotten through most of my ones and tens as I'm waiting through my next submission. And I've started looking at my nines. And dude, my freaking new listing for my mystery bags on eBay has been cooking and it's ridiculous. Really? Like I, I couldn't be happier. How much do you charge for those? 20 bucks. $19.99. Get a slab. Random slab. That's a PSA eight or higher. This is the way I, I charge a little more than that. I would give you a bunch of them because I have like 10 mystery bags. I didn't sell them down. I mean, they don't sell that quick, Thrifty. I'm not, I'm not like hurting to sell. Oh, uh, I don't know. I just heard cooking. I'm like, well, they're, they're cooking. You're not hurting hurt for bags. I thought that's all you sell. <laughs> <laughs> they're cooking. They're cooking. Like I got two today. Which it's is... on a slow cook. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Yeah. Like, like if I get one every two or three days, I'm really happy, but I got two today. Oh, yeah. So I feel like they're really cooking, but that's like, honestly, I like having stuff in my store that does that, that I can guarantee pretty much sells one a day. Like that's well, not a guarantee. A couple a day. That'd like, be amazing. But yes, that, um, that that's what I was yeah. hoping for. Um, and so like it's it's one of those things that like I, I'm happy with the slow grind, the slow burn results, yeah. and like um it's feeling like success. Um and, and, and you're I mean, building up the listing too, which is good, like for the algorithm shit. And so yeah. that's what I've been trying to work on more because I personally have the time right now to be spending every day doing my listings, this each as I go. But I yeah. don't want to be at that point. I want to be at the point where I don't have the time to do that every day. And I have a big backlog of like drafts built up so that I can schedule my listings out and yeah, not have to literally sit and list during like five days a week. I would like to just literally do that one or two days a week and schedule all my listings yeah. out so that I can spend more time doing like, you know, sorting through my bulk and listing that on TCG player or sourcing my cards on, on yeah. websites or, or going to my distributor and like seeing what he's got or just doing more, you know, beneficial things than like spending time sitting there listing. If I can schedule that all out on one day and then like do my 10 listings a day and schedule it out, that's awesome. So I, I'm, I'm trying yeah. to work on that, but right now I, I list as quickly as I, I kind of take pictures. So like, I'm sort of, I'm working on building that backlog too. Like I have 15 in my draft right now and I feel pretty good That's about good. it. Yeah. As long as you build, like you do, you could just do like an hour of back of shit a day, even like until you get up to like a certain amount and then you could just do it. Like keep doing, like you do five extra a day instead of like 20 extra, like when you, while you're building it up, you know? Yeah, and, and like my old eBay, I, I just delisted everything. I just I took it all down because like yeah. I didn't want anything to sell for like that higher rate. Like the day that I found out that I um that six percent was that happened. Oh, I yeah, sold I my whole shit then. <laughs> I sold something that day on my eBay and I cringed literally as I sold it. I almost wished that I could like yeah, cancel so it and then like go to my but I didn't want I, I'm too public. And like, if I did that to one person, that would be the one rattle video that I got. Like, no, you know, you're not gonna get rattled. Who the I fuck? Know, I know, but I'm just saying, if I did that one time, that would be the time that I got it. And then, so I wasn't. I still did it, but I took the fee. But I cringed, and I immediately took everything down. I was like, I'm not selling a single thing and giving that extra six percent. No, oh no. no. Yeah, I feel you. And they weren't even pumping my algorithm. Like they were probably putting me at the very bottom too. So like since I've started the new eBay, I have a third of what I had listed at this point because I've just been like doing, I ported a bunch of stuff, my good stuff over at first. And then I've been putting a few every day. And uh, it gets like three to five times as many sales as my old eBay did. And that's that was good. the only difference. So that's cool. Yeah. Know. So it's, it's nice. It's nice to see that sort of success and, and like, 
you know, I have more time at home, which is why I said I was cleaning. And, and that's always good, you know, when you have more time to do things like cook and hang out with the family and clean, like totally. spring cleaning, you know, it's it's important. So, yeah, I feel you, dude. What else do we have on the docket today, bro? I forget. Well, we didn't still talk about Dallas. We wanted to oh, talk. Fuck. About yeah, yeah. We, didn't okay. about we we sort of talked a little <laughs> about it, but it's been we've been skirting the issue. So let me see how many days. It's like literally three weeks. Yeah, know. they just put out a, a Instagram thing, uh, Collecticon, that said like three weeks away, and that was like yesterday. So I think they're probably on it on that. I'm really uh, excited, man. Like, I'm going to get to meet um, the new person that I, 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 I'm I potentially going to start working. Um, I don't know. I might start breaking on a new. I, I miss my community, man. I, I really miss, like, I miss live streaming, not the grind of it and not the, like, the ickiness of, like, the other live streamers in the space, but, like, I miss interacting with, like, my followers, my community. Dude, you should have. Uh... You should have done like, I mean, I know you can't go back. I get well. I mean, technically, you probably could go back, but like, there's nothing stopping me. I, I, I mean, my own pride it, is the only thing that stops me from going. No, back. I know, but like, I'm just saying, you could like do a stream where it's like, hey, I'm selling on eBay now, and just do the same thing that Dan does, where people can buy through Shopify, because that's that's less percent. Like, technically, you could offer like a slightly cheaper price, or I mean, I guess you know whatever because like shopify is only like three or four percent yeah. so it's less fees than ebay you'd have to print like your own labels and, and maybe do a little bit of extra work there um but you know like oh, i'm just saying well that's like, where i was going that's kind of where i was going with this was that like i'm actually gonna potentially start streaming once in a while with another streaming network called network <laughs> uh, ironically um but like i was actually recently approached by another platform i don't know if they maybe heard about me leaving whatnot or they just kind of saw me and they're reaching out to every streamer they see or whatever it is but mm -hmm. there's another platform that exists called uh network and they're like a breaker network that they do like sneakers funkos like records like uh, exclusive like drops of like things that are limited edition they're a website that's been around since like 2019 i guess um but they are now working to move into live streaming and doing the whole like uh, for lack of a better word like whatnot type thing you know um but they're trying um, to, to make their way into that space and so they approached me um and they they're building a new platform and they're rolling out a whole new upgrade to their platform coming i think like in may or june or something and so i may roll on with them as like one of their new streamers to try to just have a place to kind of break because i yeah. i like to interact with people and i miss the community to a certain extent and i do like opening packs but i don't like opening it for myself right. um so i might go on and, and do that with network just to kind of have some fun and the way they currently do it nick is through shopify like you said Okay. And so I'm waiting until they change that, until they roll out their new upgrade to their platform so it's all integrated. And that's probably when I'm going to debut on that platform. But, like, but like, I, I miss streaming, go. though. Like, I, I legitimately miss it. To, not the all of it, but I miss some of it. Like, the, I guess the, like, this is cool. Yeah, I love hanging out with Degenerates, too, Josh. It's a great time. It's called the casino. You could just go there also. Just yeah, well, yes, but I don't want the casino <laughs> environment. I just yeah, want to sleep at night, Thrifty. Come on. Yeah, exactly. I want to rip. So sleep. I told them sleep is I important. Yeah. To rip packs, but I wasn't interested <laughs> in doing like these games, bounties, like yeah, these crazy, yeah. you know, the shit that I was not in the, the gam extra layers of gambling. Yeah, yeah. And I know, I know, Josh. You're, you're, like, you're one of the good them. boys. You're one of the good boys. Yeah, yeah. So Just that would be the only thing is like, I told him if they ever started doing that kind of stuff, I would leave the platform like lickety split. I was like, I don't want to be associated with any of that kind of stuff or, you know, so yeah. it's just. All right. Well, I got 15 minutes left in me. So let's talk some Dallas. <laughs> Yeah, right. so that's the thing. We we do need to talk Dallas. All so right. you guys, you got a scalp table, yeah? I you got, got a scalp, scalp table, yeah. And then I you're, you're hitchhiking, right? 
And yeah, what's your situation, Nick? Do you have a table? I uh, so I bought two halves. You have um, tables? Yeah, I bought what? two halves <laughs> from two different people. Uh, <laughs> but they're in the same section, oh, so no. I'll just like be where you know what I'm saying. Like I'll just <laughs> get the, like I bought a table, but I bought them. Like, it's gonna halves. be Brad and Peek at you, and then Retro in the middle. <laughs> I don't think that's what I'm saying though. Is like I don't think that they like the the section is x amount of tables so if i bought a table's worth technically you bought a table yeah exactly like <laughs> regardless of like you know so i don't think that they have to be uh right next to each other but i have i have a table but i'm going i don't know dude i might give it a couple hours i think i'm going roth mode with it i'm putting stuff oh, yeah? in my backpack and i'm walking yeah i want to make content i want to grind i want to like get oh, stuff back okay. i don't want to i don't want to sit at the table i mean i'll wait for a buyout you know but yeah it's, it's just, i mean if it's if it feels like it's like really slow for the first few hours on saturday i'm just gonna be like yeah. all right you know like give somebody some money and be like yo watch my table i'm gonna go walk around and make shit happen i'm not like gonna sit there and wait for opportunities to fall into my lap unless you know like it's Orlando was good. Like people were coming up with like binders. Yo, would you trade? Like, do you want to buy this stuff? So like, if it's like that, then yeah, cool. But if it, if it seems like, you know, it's just like one or two sales here and there or whatever, I'm just gonna be like, all right, man, like I'll go make some stuff happen. Hold so. on, hold on, hold on. Am I getting this straight? You, you're saying that you think that when you're at the table, that's when you're missing opportunities. That's when you feel like you're missing the most opportunities at the table I, selling. I think, well, it depends. That's what I'm saying is like, if the opportunity isn't coming to the table, then like, I'm going to go make opportunity. Like I'm going to yeah, go. That's so crazy. I feel I'm the gonna... exact opposite. Like that. I love the idea of walking around, but like whenever I get out and walk around, I feel like I'm leaving so much on the table. Like I'm the opportunity of being up, like the cost of opportunity of not me, not being at the table and selling and having someone else walk, you know, watch it for me or whatever it is. Like, I don't know. Maybe I, I don't approach. That's like, true, actually. Because, like, retro, I didn't sell none of your shit while you were walking, like, that day after you got the buyout. Like, I just, like, I, I would tell people, like, yo, if you want to look at anything, like, let me know. Cause, and, like, nobody, it was weird. Because, like, you sold out. And, like, and then everyone was, like, looking at the DBZ. Like, that's because that's, like, most of what you had left, I feel like. But. Yeah, Jake um, sold a few of my DBZ cards when I walked through, but like I kind of, I don't I know. Like I'm gonna the try opportunity to... when I walk around as much as I see it walk up to me at the table, which is why I was confused as to that that logic because like it's the literal opposite. Like when my fiance was there, I had her watch the table and I felt good about that. But yeah. as I was walking around, I literally felt like I was like something. I would rather be at the table selling. Because like, I, I don't know, maybe I wasn't making the right kinds of deals happen or I wasn't being as aggressive as I should have been like when I was on the floor. But like when I was behind the table, I'm very aggressive. Like I'm like, hey, how's it going? I'm uh, interacting with everyone walking by. I'm not sitting there with my Magikarp hat, like uh, sitting down at the table, like looking at people as they walk me by, as they make eye contact. Yeah. If you make eye contact with me, I'm- You're getting a conversation with Josh. Yeah, okay? you're literally not going to get by with making eye contact and walking by. I'm like, oh, hey, how's it going? You know, I, that down. shit to me, though, is like so tiring. Like, I don't have the like social bandwidth almost at like, that's a problem that I have. I, I like, I think Orlando is my first full show like that I bended. So like- I was just like, fuck, dude, I can't, I don't care. I don't want to talk to every single person. Like, not every person is worth talking to. You know what I mean? Like, Did and you it was get cool. To that point, or but... were you immediately there? Or was that no, like, no, a, no. A, a it loop? took me like five hours to get okay. there, probably. You, just hit like... a wall. you hit a wall and you kind of got, you hit a, a certain point where you're like, all right, I hit my, my limit, basically. Like, also, like going to the show and walking. The first, I've done that a couple of times also. And like, that is fucking overwhelming. Like that can be super overwhelming if like, you don't know what you're looking for, you know? Like if you're just like kind of aimless, it's tough. And like, you can end up overpaying like for shit. And that's kind of like what you're trying to avoid really by being in person is like, 
you know, missing something on a card because like the lighting was weird or like it hit, like it didn't, like you didn't take it out of the sleeve or whatever. Like, so there are things like you have to kind of, when you're going to the shows, like you have to consider like how much you can actually do. And then like, it's, it's interesting, like how, how you get drained a little bit by it, honestly, like each day it's kind of weird oh i don't know like I, I feel you a little bit i put my headphones in i kind of like to zone out when i'm walking around like i don't want to be like i'll put i'll put my headphones on and like listen to me and like when i walk up to a table i'll take one of them out so that i can communicate with the person or right. if they say hi i don't want to be rude and just like completely ignore them but yeah i just like i'll just put my headphones in and just like turn on go mode and like I'll kind of like I'm tall, so that kind of helps. I can like stand on my tippy toes and look over people to yeah. see if like, the case is even like worth my time or whatever. Um, I'm short as fuck, but, and I yeah, have to like, yeah. I have to like fight with bitches to get into these things. I'm like, get out the way. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta get up in there and see. <laughs> oh, I'll throw bows. I'm throwing bows <laughs> in these fucking things. Yeah, I'll, I guess that's something that everyone has a different like um, level of like tolerance for like yeah. me being a whatnot seller i'm used to literally sitting down for six to eight hours and just screaming and yelling yeah. like it's it's a it's a meme but it's I, like a social I, thing though whatnot despite it being like kind of like like hermity you know like yeah it's, it's also social, social because you're talking social. and hanging out with people very like, interactive you have to literally be able to entertain you have to talk to people entertain them right. for like a certain amount of time like they're not watching a, a show they're watching you yeah so like it's it, i i guess that's a something an edge that i guess i have is that ability to do it for an extended amount because like i could go for a whole weekend at the convention and still probably do another couple of days and mm -hmm. feel fine about it like but i know that a lot of people they hit that You're wall an animal man <laughs> I, an animal. i'm like dead after like I really love conventions, though, and it's something that I realized this last year or so that after the, like, the pandemic that I went to a lot more conventions, I used to go to them as a player for Magic the Gathering and, and a, a couple of Pokemon ones, but I was more of a Magic player back, and so mm -hmm. it was more like Grand Prix or they weren't conventions for- Yeah, it was just like tournaments. And and more tournaments, yeah, so it was a totally different vibe, and I liked those. But I like my local like play group and my Friday Night Magic group a lot more. Yeah. I really enjoy the collector conventions. I really think that they're a, a staple at this point in the hobby. And they're a huge boon to our hobby. Yeah. And it's funny because like they pop up. I see them popping up all over the place. I think we touched a little bit on this in the beginning. As we said, like card shows, like local card shows, they suck. Yeah. Like they're yeah. the worst. But the big card shows, like the Collecticons, the National, the ones that are like annual, that are well run, professionally put on, those yeah. are a boon to the hobby and can bring in so many people that like I personally was sleeping on them a little bit in the beginning. And I think everybody was, it shows on like how quickly the tables are starting to like move at Collecticon. Nobody's sleeping on Collecticons That's anymore. True. So bro, and, I will say this. I went to like an anime convention. Um, I think me and Ernie went a couple, I don't remember when it was. It was like a couple of months ago though. And I was like shocked at how little Pokemon there was in the room. I'm like, there's tons. This is fucking Nerd Central. And there is three Pokemon booths in this whole fucking huge place. It I was just like, um, what's going on here? Like, why aren't we? I don't know if it's like there's not enough people to put it on or whatever, but like uh it just seemed like super underrated or something. Like people aren't trying hard enough in my area at least and i live in south florida like it's not like a it's not like a deserted fucking island that i'm on like it's a hugely populated place but like the card show the card shops or whatever aren't super invested in the local community from what i've seen at least here so it's like <clears throat> there's like a couple shops that i go to prodigy is one of them and they actually do a lot of shows you'll see them at most collecticons and like any local show that i've been to like major local show i used to buy from them on tcg player i didn't exactly. know that store prodigy is huge crazy. yeah they they have a ton of shit they're like five like 25 minutes away from me so but they and they have good singles and like 
but like the other shops like cool stuff inc they don't have any singles in their shop like why would i go there like you can buy it all off tcg player but like i'm not going there dude i just lost all of my bulk to them basically so that's why collect con is so good is it has such like a huge basis of just like pokemon it's like all card yeah. and it's like such a variety you can actually find and people bring niche cool stuff there like People don't bring cool shit when they're the only Pokemon booth in the sports right. card, you know, yeah, those yeah. convention. We had a local one that was like 20 minutes away from us this last weekend, and I was going to go to it. And then I saw their promotional video of mm -hmm. the actual show. They had probably 20 tables, literally only 20 tables, which is mm -hmm. a fair amount for like a little local Saturday show in the middle of wherever California um, that I'm in. But it literally had one, like you said, like one that looked like it might have had Weiss and anime and maybe Pokemon cards. I didn't even see any like Pokemon plushies. And then it had like a couple of other like random. But I saw that and I saw all the types of people who are like in the video, all sports collectors, like yeah. it's all sports. So like it's it's one of those things that I think that sports is still a much bigger market. And it's just there's not as much of like a TCG focused card shop market yet for these smaller shows but maybe given time as long as we don't see what nick said happen and everyone starts dying off in the next two to three years like you know and all these tcgs start dying then you're going to start seeing all the junk wax but um but it is it's kind of it's it's organically growing i would say because even though the 25th anniversary thing is done i don't think pokemon's done like i I personally, even I though I was it. really a little bit worried about what would happen after the 25th anniversary, at this point, no worry in my mind. Dude, I, I after like the bust, like I like I was so shook. There was so many things that I was worried about, like just yeah, I agree. I'm just like I can't, I can't be bothered. I really, yeah. can't. it's just so like the backlog thing. I couldn't yeah. agree more. Like that was something that was really worrying me about. Like these like backlog. That what's they in the had. backlog? Everyone, There's what's nothing in the backlog, Who bro. Who like, cares? I, what's in the backlog? Just keep fucking grading. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was wrong about that. I'll be the first yeah. to say. But I, I don't I think. Was just I, last thing I, I was just like i was talking to my uh mom last night we were on the way back from my brother's wedding and we were talking to her about like uh beanie mania and just like all these different like bubble things or whatever and i was like you know i think pokemon could get to 50 years like that's like a realistic like i think a 50 year like it's it's possible like i mean it's it'll i, de I definitely think it's making it to like 30 and 35 for sure like it just yeah, man, I don't know. It's it's such a, not going I say it's a waste of time, weird. but I, I just, I'm done having the like, oh, like, is Pokemon going to last talk? It's just like, I'm all, you I know, know like, it. like, it does nothing to like. We'll know if it's not going to. We, we, yeah, exactly. We will be the ones to be the, the lightning rods when it started. We'll say, hey, we're not selling anymore. We're going, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it'll be obvious. Yeah. I think, and I think it would be, take. Like, I think other stuff could die. Like, I think a lot of these, like, smaller, like, newer TCGs that are even of popular IPs, I think that stuff could die. And Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic could still be super strong, you know? And even if it goes through, like, a slow period, because, yeah, man, I don't know. Like, even if even if there's a couple bad sets that come out or whatever, or it's, like, a slow period, it just, the market just seems so much big. Like, it's just nuts, man. I don't know. Like, it's, it's kind of weird because we haven't had a bad set yet. Like, we haven't seen a Crimson Invasion almost. Like, that shit. Guys, were, were you there? You weren't there. I don't, I don't, I think I came in like right. I mean, to, to be honest, like when I first came in, I had no idea. Like, it was all just about like, whatever like i watched twice big jake figured out like what were the cool sets and then just like went to the store and bought them you know yeah. what i mean like i had no idea what was going on or what was a bad set or what was a good set like when it's i when i got crazy. in yeah i thought an amazing rare was like oh my god i pulled like the biggest set of my life and then i pulled the shiny charizard v max went on ebay saw what it was worth and i was like oh shit like, this is crazy and then i was an idiot i held it too i was like it was six hundred dollars six hundred dollars and i i was like oh well this is the biggest hit in the set this is just oh, gonna go up i was like, such an idiot dude such an idiot anyways 
so I, I love that card. I, I had that was my first big sale in the Pokemon. Well, first big modern sale in Pokemon was the Champions Path Shiny Charizard. I sold that Gross. shit for seven hundred and fifty dollars. I think. <sighs> Shit, dude, that's fire. Yeah, you raw. know what's funny? Last raw, time. too, right? Holy raw. shit, dude, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Dude, oh, dude, my dude, God. He tried to claim it didn't get there, and he, he did a chargeback. Okay, we are back. I apologize about that, folks. Um, As you can see, it's just three. We are minus retro and plus kitty. Yeah, we, we've gained a kitty, and we've lost a Retro Specs, um, but we're kind of going to start wrapping up the podcast. Retro already kind of had to go, um, my computer crashed, and we sort of had an issue with space, and uh, we're just going to kind of wrap it up from here, um, but if anyone is still here, you get a little bonus, you get the kitty to retention. Yes, cat shots. Yeah, this is... Best okay. kitty in the whole podcast room, yeah, honestly. Cat. This is Come on. Cat. My cat's um, kind of an asshole comparatively. I am. But yeah, um, all here. thank you for being here. And if you made it through the podcast, thank we you. We do appreciate being. that. We will finish talking about Dallas now, I guess. Because like I guess, yeah, gross. we could probably we could talk a little bit more about Dallas. Yeah, I, I yeah. like we got cut cut off randomly. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It was um, super random, but uh besides, got a whole thing. What's That's your good. your general goal besides just trying to sell everything? Are you trying to get anything right now? Are you in the, any PC mode? Are you looking for things or um the only thing I would probably I don't think people will have it honestly the stuff i'm looking for like most people don't have like weird ass japanese promos like it's going to be like one of the people in our friend group that has it if they if they do at all so it's Rock like pokemon <laughs> maybe you know i probably will find it at retrospect table to be perfectly honest if i was getting anything but uh you like those weird like you know, jumbo cards and like you know, exclusive. I'm sending programs. some to Beckett actually. I think for for like a new little experiment. So I'm Beckett never... instead of PSA, or is it simply? Yeah. Uh... No, just Beckett. Just trying it out because like I've never sent to Beckett first of all, and I want to send some cards. I think it's like stupid to not send cards there uh, at all. And then like. I yeah like there's I don't know it's just like an interesting other avenue and I don't think people use it enough so might as well give it a shot um but yeah for Dallas I'm just gonna be uh backpacking pretty much I I have honestly if I sell I need to sell like the EV trainer mag promos you know what i'm talking about oh like, those uh, you just got tens on those right yeah yeah i'm gonna those try to awesome sell those. those are so cool man if, if i sell those i basically can pay for the whole trip and so if i move those three cards literally i could sell them to cloud i could sell them to whoever the fuck uh, you know what i mean so or i can try to trade them into some crazy weird shit and see what i can get but i'm gonna just get try to go for raw like anything gradable lots of charizards i don't know just try to like find silly charizards for like 75 bucks or less and that's kind of all you got to do really but honestly i was gonna help retro as our train will go for uh raw or 10 I, I I don't know either way i mean how long do you think you can sell them you know buy them for 70 and sell them for 200 for the last two years or whenever the fuck celebrations came out, however long ago that was. So, do you think its trajectory is actually upward moving rather than downward moving at this point? Because no, 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 it's going down. They're going down. But okay. like, I think I sold uh, like two or three of them right before the last Collecticon for like two ninety, um, and then I think Dan's getting like two thirty to two fifty for them, two twenty to two fifty for them right now. So they're not, I mean, people, I mean, also the raw price adjusted quite a bit. Like it was like $44 for that card at one time. And the 10 was, was still selling for 300. So like, it just like people didn't realize or like people weren't trying or something or they had moved on to other plays and that shit was still cooking like crazy, dude. So, and it still works. Like even now, 75, 80 bucks, you pay for a Selly Charizard, 220, fuck me. That's one of the better 
margins you're gonna find right now in like lower end, like under a hundred dollar cards, you know. That's pretty damn good, yeah. I mean, honestly, so, yeah, that's kind that. of the play. And like, I was gonna help retro with uh, some filming stuff and try to like do more like type of a vlog thing because like he watches a ton of he was talking about roth cards when he uh when, when we kind of yeah, he said that but i didn't uh the roth i don't know that reference as well but he must be there's like a, or a bunch of like card show card show vloggers that do sports like high roth does like high end also which is like closer to what retro is like interested in so i get why he like gravitates towards that um and like they they kind of just see it as transactional, not as like, you know, oh, this is bad that you flip or whatever. It's not like that in sports. So I understand like how, why he gravitates towards that kind of stuff. Um, and it's, it's just like, of that, so I don't really know the feeling or it, they're fun, honestly. Like um, it's cool. Cause we saw one of the dudes at Collecticon in Orlando, his name is sports card taxi. And he does um, he has a YouTube channel also. And I was like, yo taxi, like, and I had some soccer cards with me in Orlando. So I was like, hey, bro, can you like move these for me? <laughs> like, that's kind of his thing. He just like shoots out a, a text message to some people he knows and like can help you move your cards and he takes whatever percentage and that's fine. Hmm. Um, but they do vlogs and he wants to do like that for Pokemon shows because like there's there's one dude out there that a couple of guys out there that do them like regularly, but and like Green Shiz will put out his when he goes or he like walks around if he's walking. Mm -hmm. um, but nobody does it like consistently. They're and like really these hard dudes, to do. Yeah, we like videos every week, you know. So they're really hard to do though. I mean, they're, I mean, I guess they're not if you're used to it, but it's just such an unnatural thing for me. Like I tried in Long Beach to do it and I still have the B roll. And yeah. I tried in Denver and like I still have some of that B-roll. It's like really tough to actually put together and like make it coherent. Yeah. And you get sidetracked when you're there because it's a really long. It's, it takes you like out of it. That's why I wanted yeah. to like be there to like while retro is like doing a deal or whatever. I could just like be filming from like the next table over or like while I'm looking at shit at the same table. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. where he doesn't have to do any of the work really. Like he just has to kind of work mm -hmm. his own thing and then I can just like get the footage and he's been working on editing and like trying he's trying to like learn how to do that stuff and he's good like he can also even put his own fucking music in the shit like so we don't have to worry about copyrights which is cool like and I was like bro you should bring like a drone to fucking collect the con and just like do it like over it like before they open like while people are setting up I think it'd be a really cool shot to like see what it looks like kind of sped up or whatever um of just like people getting ready I think that would be just like a cool like I just keep thinking of these weird things in my head that like would look awesome in a video and well, anyone who does it who can't go to the events I know is craving that content and I know that when people you know the events happen there's so much FOMO that like for people who aren't there that like any content would get eaten up um, yeah i mean like, ernie's video did great if you go check it out if you want to see the stuff from orlando it's like little just like silly freaking interviews with all the homies um ernie did it on spicy boys tv and it has a ton of views like for you know dan shared it everyone shared it so like it did really well for uh you know a random ass video that he put together and it didn't have any cards in it like it wasn't it was just for us kind of it was like for our friends really mm -hmm. so People, people want that know content. us. So you know? there's definitely there's something on the table for that for sure. Yeah. Like I said though, it's hard easier said than done. Like when you're there, sure. it really does take you out of it. And it's like to have to film and it kind of like when you're there, you want to use all your energy to like, you know, be in it. So like I know that if I were to bring out my phone and like I don't know, like I wonder if I were to just set up like a camera behind me at Collecticon and just film the entire thing. And it have would, a ton of stuff to like edit if that would be like cool or if that would be like worthwhile or whatever it would be there are people that have done that there's like this dude on youtube that's doing that kind of stuff he's like from a vendor perspective basically and so he'll just like speed up that stuff and only like show you the deals basically and like he doesn't show all the like amount that he pays for stuff and all that stuff but and neither did these other sports guards guys. Like you don't know what they pay for anything, basically. Like hardly. 
um, unless it's like in the title, it's like, oh, I bought a $10,000 or whatever the fuck it is, you know? Mm. Um, and they're like super big. Like <laughs> I'm, you know, we're small fishes comparatively, honestly, but um, especially Pokemon, like there's not a lot. Crystal Pokemon and Palatown and all them, they probably have some of the bigger cards in the room. <clears throat> and that's, I don't think they're doing anything like that really or trying to mess with that kind of content, but it'll be yeah, fun it, to try and just see how it goes. And it's definitely something I can see doing well. Yeah, I could definitely see it doing well. It's just like who's going to do it and if it's going to, how well can it do if it, it's hard to do, I guess. Or it's, maybe it's not hard. Maybe it's just a matter of people aren't doing it. But And it's like also, I, when I'm there, I feel like I'm trying to get good deals and retro will just like, I, I don't think I can get that many. I don't see a ton of good deals. Like when I'm looking at the, some of the cards there, you know what I mean? Like there are needles, good deals are like needles and haystacks of these fucking things to be like. That's what I feel like. Like, I'm never on the side, like, when I'm at the convention thinking that I'm going to be getting a good deal buying yeah. from these booths. It's more like yeah. I'm there to sell because I feel like I can sell it for a better price than I would exactly. sell it for online and not that's have to. That's what I mean. And, and, like, you can, if you know, like, what the prices are, that's another thing. It's like you have to go in prepared because, like, people are going to be taxing you. Like, it's a, it's true. It's like there's a convention tax, basically. And it should actually be the opposite way. Like it should be like they take 10% off the last comps because the shit is getting, they're getting paid in cash most of the time or like 80% of the time or whatever it is. Like, um, so you just have to know what shit costs. Cause if you don't and the internet sucks in there, you're going to get taken for a total ride. And like you get home and you're like, shit, this is not even like, okay, I overpaid for this by like 20% or 15% or whatever percent. And like that cuts in to like, you know, especially when PSA is at 19, like you're, you have to be conscious of all of these things. So um, going in, like knowing TCG player prices, like, or knowing what it goes for on eBay or whatever, like, honestly, I just, like I started, I pray, I'm starting to price out my binder for, for Den or what the fuck is it? Dallas? Jesus Christ. I yeah. Yeah. I, I always get them mixed up too. Such a mess. But yeah, I just bought like my sister's boyfriend actually just got me this collection from one of his friends nice. and this dude ripped. He has probably, he showed me pictures of like the tubs that are in his house and they're full of empty fucking Pokeball tins. Oh no. Like, Oh. And, and I'm just like, oh, this man, oh, I'm so sorry for your friend. He's such a fucking DJ. And I'm like, he's like, yeah, but he has cards he wants to get rid of. And I'm like, I perked up and I was like, what? <laughs> and oh. so he like made this whole thing for me. And I just been putting that shit in a binder and it looks fucking nice, dude. Mm, look at this. We got Mewtwo's. We got Vinis. Oh, we got break cards. Look at all these beautiful oh, break cards. <laughs> like I got Eevees, Charizards. I'm just like going by Pokemon and just like pricing everything out. And it's kind of, some of it's like weird. There's like a Latias EX in here, like old ass full arts and stuff. And I'm like, dude, this kid ripped so much shit. Like, this is crazy. Like, this is thousands and thousands of dollars worth of product this kid must have ripped just to get these cards that I literally paid him $350 for. Like, that's fucking tragic. But at the same time, he's like a broke boy and he needs money. So, like, technically, it's a win-win. Um, and I've already sold, like, half of, like, there was, like, 10 cards in the thing that would probably get me more than half my money back. So I was like, fuck it, I might as well just do it. And then the rest of it, I could sell at Collecticon. And I don't even have to, like, or I can trade it for at Collecticon, which is, I think kind of a better way to go that way you don't have to I, i'm gonna do a lot more training. training yeah i'm gonna try a lot more like walking up to people and being if i see someone with a binder like a fat binder in their hand i'm gonna be like hey what do you have and like take them to a fucking lunch table like I, i'm not letting those people walk by me anymore like mm -hmm. also i'm just gonna like troll the fucking journey's end line dude Anybody that does buyouts, I'm just going to troll that line and like look at what people have around and just fucking pull them right out the line. I don't give a fuck, dude. This is not like, this is not 
for the faint of heart, dude. Like, Swifties <laughs> out here to make a buck. I'm not trying to. I'm not fucking around. I'll pay these kids more than what Journey's End is gonna pay you, dude. That's another thing. Like, yeah. come on, dude. It's a win-win for everyone in that pit. In that case, except for Journey's End, but <laughs> yeah. I don't know how they get people to like line up for like 20 minutes waiting in line to get their collections appraised because like. It's people, people don't want to do the work themselves. People are super fucking lazy. That's they're lazy, thing. and they just want to be told literally how much. But then they're like worth. mad when they find out what their collection's worth, and it's like you should probably have figured that out before. Or like, I hate when people like walk up and they want to know how much you'd give them for something, and it's like, no, how much do you want? Like, I mean, that's a that's always the game, and that's I always cannot. The if you don't know what you want for it, I don't want any of it. Like, I mean, tell me, I tell me, you it. don't know how to sell something without telling me you don't know how to sell right, something. Exactly. You walk up to me and you say, like, "How much will you give me for this?" I'm saying you really like, don't want to sell that, do you? Because you, I'm not gonna say a number you're gonna like. I'm like five bucks. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? You know? Like, I don't know. So just like know what you want, or like a ballpark, or like have a range if you are trying to like sell something to a vendor that's another thing like you don't have to sell to that vendor any like you could take something to josh and if he doesn't give you what you want you can just go to the next vendor there's like four to five hundred vendors in this whole shit like shopping around is a good idea don't worry if you just have to say no and like you go to the best the person that gives you the best offer like you just remember, you have to remember where you're at, where, who it is, like... My yeah. goal, this whole Collecticon, that if I can walk away out of Collecticon without getting took by a little kid on a trade-up challenge, mm-hmm. I will feel like right. I did well. Every I got so collect- wrecked by kids at Collect. I get wrecked. They're kids. so cute, and they're so, like, they. you fall for it, they're like, can I just trade this little... And you're like, sure, it doesn't hurt, but no. <laughs> I will not get wrecked by kids again. I will not. That's my goal for this. <laughs> you can dog. trade them their raw cards for your mystery bags. And that's actually. I mean, that's that's just. I'm not going to play these trade up games. I'm just saying, I think I'm going to have a canned response whenever the trade up challenge happens. And it's going to be something that's like respectful. But also, like, I only trade up into money, into yeah, cash. Like, I, money. I, I'm sorry, I can't trade up, or like something like I, I can't, I like, I'll do a trade up if you pay me money, or like I'll trade you money for it, or I don't know, like. Something. Yeah, you gotta work on that, dude. That does not sound right. That's not that's not the right thing. You I gotta can... work on that, but but there's gonna be some sort of response, you know. I'm not gonna get taken by a little kid this time because like. I was taken by a couple of little kids in every convention that I've been to that I've done trade-up challenges. And it's fine. Not, I think it's fine, honestly. It's whatever. It is it's fine, good. but at the same time... But I don't want it to happen every time. Like, I don't want it to... Yeah, and I don't, I don't think it's a good, like... I, I personally, as a seller, obviously don't like it because it's like... No. But in, like... You're not you know, dubbing, taking dubs. <laughs> it's just like... So... Can I just give like this instead of doing the trade up challenge? Can I just trade you the paper clip for the base set box? Yeah. Can we instead just start of there? that? Can I skip all the work and just trade the base set box for the paper clip, or do I have to? Is it do I have to do all the stupid like grimy? Hey, get my get my cousin to go up and do a trade up challenge, like bro. Oh, if look, you want to scam kid. vendors, go rent a kid for a day, right. and then. Then just like have the cutest kid you can possibly find off the street and just like be like, I'll I'll give you Pokemon cards. If Don't you rent a kid. Use a family I'm member. I'm Everyone's kidding. got a family. That. That's Everyone's like, got a family member. Just use a family let me, member. Let me, re- let me go back. Let me yeah, 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 that. We, That's kidnapping. We, we that use a family member's kid and you can pay them if you want, but you know, or just give them Pokemon <laughs> cards. Tell them that they can keep the first booster pack that they trade up with. Oh my god, dude! I'm fucking. Oh, that's so funny. It's like I'm one like, o'clock in the morning, and you guys, you guys got me out here trying to trying to scare yeah, me. Yeah, but the trade up challenge thing is gonna be funny because every single time I go to one of these things, I always everyone hates it and everyone gets pissy about it, and it's just like bad. I always, I always let get yourself get scammed by kids. It's good for the hobby. I'm la- It's good to have kids in it, but at the same time, I do no trade up challenges. 
Don't bring your um, kids. Straight up you get you. I think we win <laughs> against kids more often than we don't with like buying their shit. Honestly, so like technically, oh, I don't buy from kids. I don't. I buy do. From kids. I You're mean, stupid. that's You're not buying from I'm kids. Not at CSA sevens, you know. That's possible, but if you get to look at them first, you know. I, the, the last time I bought from a kid was at the Orlando Collecticon, and it was at Mu V, and it was a it was a damaged. Oh Mew yeah, and he crumbled. Yeah. Art, and I literally bought from the kid knowing it was damaged, and I told him I could only give him like twenty bucks for it, and he's like, "Okay, it's okay. damaged." So, and I said, "All right, I, there you go." He's happy, and I just crumbled it right there <laughs> and it literally broke him it broke him when i did that <laughs> and it's currently at psa right now so oh my god it'll sell more as a psa one than it will i don't know one. i'll tell you all the cards that i got from orlando are in grading right now and i'll let you know on buying from dummies we'll see but i will say that a couple of cards that i traded for like in denver from kids i learned my lesson and it's just like I looked at it quickly, but like then I looked at it more out of the sleeve, and oh, it's like man. micro scratches everywhere. You know, like it's just honestly a lot that... of these cards. Like I thought I was gonna be able to grade some of the shit that I bought for my sister's friend or my uh, her boyfriend's friend, mm -hmm. and like I thought I was gonna be able to. There was like a Dana full art from Cosmic Eclipse or some or Team Up or some shit like mm -hmm. a Pokemon Center lady from like the ultra like the best of X Y. A couple of cards I thought I was going to be able to grade. And I was just like, okay, well, if those, if I can grade one or two of those, even like, I probably make my money back. Like, on that error is so cards. hard to grade, though. That's what I'm saying. And like, I got it and I was like, oh, these are fucked, dude. Um, yeah. Okay, he well, been, he could have been really good about opening okay. them and just right out of the pack, X, Y. And you know, Sun and Moon was better, but even Sun and Moon era had some really bad. I mean, Burning Shadows is ass. It was just yeah. straight ass. Yeah, yeah, but xy was the the worst of the printing like the corners on xy make me want to fucking kill myself and the centering on a lot of them it's so bad and like the it's like the the corners don't even look uniform on no, the they're cards. like all square <laughs> like like yeah, some are like square and then the other ones are rounded and it's like on the same card it's like what were you doing here like cards are like it was partially rough. cut <laughs> i was i was kind of hot when i got all these shits in but then like I don't know. There was like some good shit. Like, I don't know. It's like, oh, half these big cards that I thought I was going to be able to grade are like 30 bucks. So like there's yeah, at least 10 of those. Well, a lot so, of the like, XY, that era aged really well, which is surprising to me because I really don't like the XY era that much. Like, It's like a lot of this shit is like um, fucking, what's it called? Evolutions. But I think that's fine. Like that's I think good. that's gonna be fine. At, that's at good, actually. Yeah. Like, I like I don't know. I don't think that's gonna be a fucking problem. I think that's a problem to people we know, but I don't think that's a problem at a show, to be honest. It's yeah, like some it's... most popular Pokemon. Who the fuck cares? Like, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. It's one of those things that I think that there's a certain element of the market that we don't see as investment yeah. like channel types. Like, right. we always get into the nuance and the big brain and the grading and there's yeah. just a level of casuals out there that are just like they're driving the market more than we think more than yeah. we know more than we'll ever it. get that they'll buy these things and never ever sell them and they'll just throw them in a binder and the fact that your friend reached out and sold that to you it's something that most of these people will never, we'll do. never do yeah and or so they'll, they'll just like sell lost. it at a garage sale for nothing or yeah, it'll so get it'll less thrown away than I'll it'll give right cost. now. It'll get thrown out on accident, you know, mm -hmm. by some landlord who goes through and has to throw all their tenants' old shit because they left, and it the landlord's not looking, you know, he just wants to get a new tenant in the house. He's gonna throw away everything there, and those Pokemon guards are gone. And it's not because, like, you know, who cares if they're nine point one billion? There, that's not what was graded so no. you know there's attrition for these types of things and um it, a lot of them won't make it to what we do with them and grade them so right. we are very jaded in that regard and i always remind myself of that but that's why i'm happy to get get into other uh parts of the market like you know selling those big boxes of, of bulk there is gonna, it's exciting for me it's a it's a selling cards that will eventually get thrown away 
Yeah, it's, it's, it gives them a new life. <laughs> it's like what I feel. It's it's exciting, you know? It's great. It gives, uh, oh, people who actually goodness. use them and play the game, wow. No one I know is going to do it, but maybe someone will, you know? <laughs> true, that's true. I went to regionals. They do get played. I will say yeah, that. They do definitely. Yeah, so it's one in the morning where you're Let's at. wrap this shit up, Papa. I'll, I'll let you sleep. Everyone who came, thank you for, uh, you know, visiting. Thanks, with chat. Us. We Take love you. And uh, catch the next one. I don't know who the guests. Hopefully, we'll have we back, but we may have a new guest, but we'll see. Um, thanks, Flex Thrifty. Gods. Go find down below. We're going to link Thrifty's channel in the description. Come hang out. Yeah, we opened follow. Disney 100 this week, and we'll also send the homie some oh. evolving skies packs for free yeah, no the out of those the fucking packs. homie dude all right i'm about to open one pack and then we're gonna get the fuck out of here okay? moon on me all yeah. right moon on me papo all right we got let's see i know eddie ursa Beavis. code color she's not Pop it. It. i can see the code i don't think it's good ah oh. Ah, oh, fuck my whole. Oh. Life. I hate these. Green code card. I hate. I hate evolving skies. I'm all set. I'm so done. What do you I think evolving skies? Them. Before we go, what do you think those packs are going to sell for in Dallas by the time we get there? You think they're going to be ten dollars a pack? Ten men, dude. What? The box are four hundred right now. Shit. Yep, ten bucks a pack. That sounds about right. At least ten bucks a pack. Yep, that sounds like probably what they're going to be going for. That's unfortunate, but. Be ready. Actually, All just right. don't open Evolving Skies, friends. Just never. Don't do open again. Evolving Skies English. Don't open it at all. Just buy the singles it. and do what you're going to do with them. Do you want a Gordy or do you want a Snow Leaf badge? I got some bulk here if you could if you use want, it. You want those things? Oh, you know, I'm just jonesing for that. <laughs> no, uh, I probably have 69 of each of those in my. <laughs> okay, pocket. okay. Right. You're, you're stocked up. Though. We'll see you guys on the next one. And <laughs> thanks for coming by. Thanks, guys.